Montreal. They're getting ready for Saturday afternoon baseball. And Dallas Green has played to smile about as his Mets are winning. They're trying to make it three in a row today as the New York Mets come calling on the Montreal Expos inside Olympic Stadium in Montreal. And as the fans file in for the game today, we'll check the standings in the East where the Braves are leading the Expos by four. The New York Mets are five games away from break even. They're 12 games behind the Atlanta Braves. A very pleasant good afternoon to you along with Jeff Torborg. I'm John Rooney. With these Montreal Expos, Jeff, they have been a team that has been winning in the 90s, yet they haven't been able to make the playoffs. They did have the best record in baseball in 1994. But when you check out the teams with the best winning percentages in the 90s, the Braves have won a world championship. The White Sox have won a division title. Cincinnati has won a world championship and the Expos are still trying to get there. Well it's amazing to me John that they're even a competitive after the 94 season they lost two all-star outfielders two all-star pitchers but I think Felipe Alou their manager keeps them alive their farm system seems to continue to produce they've made some smart trades and they keep to, they continue to be competitive. Well, deal with the Dodgers brought Henry Rodriguez over he's going to the all-star game and here is Mark Grizzolanik and he's going to be going to the all-star game as well. That's great for both these guys young Grizzolanik going his second year Henry Rodriguez wasn't real happy getting traded over here and now he's producing. It's great for this ball club to see these guys take up where the other people have left off. When you were managing the Mets, the Mets didn't do a very good job of catching the baseball, but they're pretty strong up the middle. Todd Hundley played for you there, and Lance Johnson played for you while with the White Sox. Yeah, they did. No, we didn't do very well when I was managing them, but these two guys have really <laughs> stepped up for this ball club, and Lance Johnson's an all-star now, as we say, and was an outstanding player in the American League. Todd Hundley has worked so hard to get to where he is, and he has become a leader of this ball club, and they are strong up the middle and really coming as a ball club. Let's take a look at the pitchers for today's game. On the mound for the Montreal Expos, Kirk Reeder. He's 5-5 five five with a 4.02 ERA. And Bobby Jones, 7 up, 5 down, a 4.63 earned run average, will make the start for the Mets. And we're just a couple of days away from the All-Star game. So get set for baseball. And we'll be back to Montreal after these messages from your local Fox station. You're watching Fox Saturday Baseball. Who fled? See how they run. You stole $25 million from the Cuban Mafia. Kill it. See how they fly. I don't want half. Half? On July 19th. Hey, these people are trying to kill you. See how they fled. All right, half. And it's here. We are even. No. Now we even. Fled. Made it off. Starts Friday, July 19th. Guys. This year, we can go all the way. We can beat anybody. Yeah! We could beat the Braves. Yeah! We could beat the Reds. Yeah! We could beat the Dodgers. Yeah! We could beat the Wiz. Yeah! yeah. Oh, no, that's, that's, impossible. that's impossible. Hey, nobody beats the Wiz. Almost had him. This week, find practically all of our versatile, lightweight, personal, and portable phones on sale. Nobody beats the Wiz. Home Improvement, tonight at 7.30 on Fox 5. Welcome back to Olympic Stadium in Montreal. Today, the New York Mets and the Montreal Expos, and along with Jeff Torborg, I'm John Rooney. It's great to have you with us. Earlier today during batting practice, you take a look at 61-year-old Felipe Alou, the manager of the Expos, who come in at 48 and 37. He was out taking some ground balls and shagging some flies and and as we talk to players they feel that with Felipe going out there and pitching batting practice and taking ground balls and being one of them it helps them relax and getting to their games. He's a really special guy to be around. He, he gives them confidence. He's constantly in their corner and all they most of them say is he lets them play and we know he'll never get mad at us. So the Expos take the field. There's Dallas Green the manager of the New York Mets. And let's check out the Miller's starting lineup. The New York Mets lead off with Lance Johnson in center field. Jose Vizcaino is at second base in left field. Chris Jones. Jeff Kent at third base. Todd Hundley is catching. Alex Ochoa is in right field and he's played two weeks batting 367. Butch Husky at first base. Edgardo Alfonso the shortstop and Bobby Jones is doing the pitching. Defensively for the Montreal Expos Jeff. And they line up like this defensively, John. Clifford Floyd is the left fielder. F.P. Santangelo in center field. Moises Alou in right field. Dave Silvestri is a third baseman. And the two guys up the middle have done a great job for them. Mark Grislanik and Mike Lansing. Henry Rodriguez is at first base. Darren Fletcher is a catcher. And the pitcher is left-hander Kurt Reeder. 
Reader is five and five with a 402 earn run average and he's making his 15th start does not have a complete game. The opponents have hit 270 against him. This is his first start against the Mets this season. 0 and 1 last year as he lost to Bobby Jones. A 26 and 11 major league record. He's not a very hard thrower, is he, Jeff? No, he is, and I think probably inside with no wind at his back, he's lucky to get to the mid 80s. But he knows how to pitch. He's got an outstanding changeup that he turns over away from right-handers. He's got to paint the corners. He's got to really have good control, and he's got a real good curveball. And if you know and remember that he started out 10 and 0 before he got a decision loss in the major league level, you know he knows how to pitch. It's just a matter of if he has the control today. Darren Fletcher is his catcher and Kurt Reeder has just finished his starting warm up pitches 6 3 195 pounds 25 years old makes his home in Hoylton Illinois. The leadoff batter will be Lance Johnson. Johnson led the American League in hits last year leadoff batter for the Chicago White Sox but could not come to terms with them and switched to come back to the National League. He was actually with the St. Louis Cardinals before coming to the big league level with the Chicago White Sox and sticking with the White Sox 317 hitter leads the majors and triples and he can occasionally hit the long ball. So here we go from Montreal and cutting on the first pitch Lance Johnson fouls it off and he's not going to take many walks Jeff. No he's not he's not your prototypical leadoff hitter where he'll take a lot of pitches deep into the count to see what the pitcher has he looks for the first pitch that looks good and he goes to Whalen. Showing bunt Johnson takes a ball one ball and one strike and Lance will bunt. He, he's not too much intimidated by the artificial turf. He can use his good speed. So best for you third base playing in some guarding against that bunt. In center field. Santangelo is waiting and we have one down. That's the way the game begins with all star Lance Johnson flying to center. The umpires for the game today Paul Nord has the plate Greg Bonin at first Frank Pulley at second base and Larry Ponsino is the umpire at third. The number two hitter in the lineup is Jose Vizcaino the second baseman switch hitter will be batting right handed a 313 average one home run and 23 runs batted in. The Mets at 40 and 45. One ball and no strikes. A young team. It's going to fluctuate, Jeff, where they'll get into some winning streaks and then get into some losing streaks. Yes, the Mets expected a lot out of their kids this year. And one of the major problems you have when you're depending on a lot of young pitching, you're never sure whether they're going to come up hurt, which is what happened to two of their three top starters. There's a strike. You remember how the Braves pitchers had to suffer through a lot of growing pains and then they suffered through some division winners and a world championship after that. That's a strike. John I like what I've seen of this Mets team. I've seen a lot of games this year and just broadcast one two weeks ago and this young Robert Person stepped up where Bill Pulsifer the left hander is down but Person stepped up with good stuff. Strike three after falling behind two and all. Reader comes back to strike out Vizcaino and they're two down. Now this is the way Reader has to pitch here. You'll see he pitched a couple pitches outside. Now here he comes with a ball coming inside. Cut the ball just a little bit inside. And he doesn't have a, re a real good fastball. So what he has to do is locate the ball outside and then come in and keep the, the hitters honest, which he did right there. Johnson is flying out. Vizcaino struck out. And here's Chris Jones playing left field hitting 262. A base hit to right field on the first pitch thrown by Reader. So the Mets get a base runner and extend the inning to third baseman Jeff Kent. Chris Jones had done a good job for this ball club in part time play last year. So he goes up to the plate and he looks for the first ball outside and he gets it and drives it to the right side of the field. That's a good game plan. You can see from that shot he took a ball might have been outside and hit it to right field. Good game plan Tom McCraw the hitting coach of the Mets is set up. Jeff Kent is hitting 292. 20, or he has nine home runs, 36 runs batted in, backed up by a fellow who has 21 home runs in Todd Hunley. Kent is hitting cleanup today, though he, even though he's had his woes in the field, where he's made several errors, he doesn't seem to carry them to the plate. Jeff Kent is a very intense player. He had 20 home runs last year and had 65 RBIs, but that was playing second base. He moved over to third base and he's been struggling. He's had six errors in his last six games. He told me yesterday they've been stupid errors. He said, I don't know why I've made them. I don't know why I haven't concentrated or what. A ball 
the count at one ball and one strike. And Candace hit safely in 17 of his last 18 games, batting 351 during that time, yet has had his struggles in the field. And he told me he had played probably more than 60 games at third base while with the Toronto Blue Jays organization before joining the Mets. One ball, one strike. And safe at first base, Chris Jones, who does not have a stolen base, by the way. And Kurt Reeder has a real good move over to first base, so Chris Jones better stay a little close here. This is one of those mismatches. Unless you've got great speed, you don't mess around with a left-hander who's got a good move. A drive toward the gap in left center field. Long run for Cliff Foy. And he makes the catch in the alley. Jeff Cannis denied extra bases by Cliff Floyd. One hit, one left on. And after a half inning, the Mets failed to score. The Montreal Expos are coming to bat at Olympic Stadium. Network MCI asked, how do you host the All-Stars? Network MCI, that's how. Jeff Kent's drive to left center field was caught by Cliff Floyd, so the Mets failed to score in the top of the first inning. Now in the bottom of the first, here's the new Miller Beer starting lineup for the Montreal Expos. Mark Ruzalanik is at shortstop. At second base, it's Mike Lansing. Lansing is seventh in the league with 33 multi-hit games. Henry Rodriguez at first base with his 25 home runs. Boises Alou in right field. Darren Fletcher is catching. F.P. Santangelo in center field. Cliff Floyd in left. The eighth place hitter is Dave Silvestri at third. And Kirk Reeder, the pitcher, bats number nine. Defensively for the Mets, Jeff. Dallas Green's defense starts with Chris Jones in left field in place of the injured Bernard Gilkey. All-star center fielder Lance Johnson, Alex Ochoa, the young phenom in right field, Jeff Kennett third base, Edgar Alfonso at shortstop, Jose Vescano is the second baseman, Butch Husky is over at first base, all-star Todd Hundley behind the plate, and Bobby Jones, the young right-hander, is on the mound. Jones is 7-5 and five with a 4.63 earned run average. He's starting for the 17th time with one complete game. The opponents have hit 291 against him. He's allowed 15 home runs in 101 innings of work. He's 6'4, 225 pounds, 26 years old, and makes his home in Fresno, California. Jones will be pitching to Gruzalonic, then Mike Lansing, and Henry Rodriguez as we get started with the bottom of the first inning. John Bobby Jones is a big guy. You'd think he'd be a power pitcher. He is not. He's a good command pitcher. He's got command of all his pitches, really knows how to pitch. Came out of Fresno High School where Tom Seaver went. A ball of no strikes with Gruzalonic taking the first pitch of the game. Mark comes in hitting 320, five homers and 30 RBIs. And he hits that one down the line for extra base. As Chris Jones chases it down in the corner, Gruzalonic is safe at second with a stand up double leading off the first for the Expo. He's an exciting player, Jeff. He really is an exciting player, John. He's a kid that was destined for uh, being a good player at this level, but you never know how a kid's going to react till he gets here. This is a hanging breaking ball for Bobby Jones right in the middle of the plate. And Grizzlelanik doesn't mess around and hits a pee down the left field line. That's his 112th hit. The Montreal record for hits by a shortstop was set by Hubie Brooks with 183 in 1985. The number two hitter is Mike Lansing. I'm sorry, John. That was his 19th double. Lansing with the butt on the first base side will move Grizzlelanik over to third. Lansing is just out at first with a tag by Husky. Well, you hold your breath, Jeff, when you see a player go diving for the first base bag and all the injuries that can happen over there with a jammed finger or a shoulder problem. But Lansing is all right as he sacrifices Grizzlelanik over to third. Here's the play and the tag. And that's a nice play by Butch Husky. Butch has not played a lot of first base. He was originally a third baseman. But that's a heads up play by Lansing. And he's a gritty, get your uniform dirty type of player. He's an exciting player. He made sure he got that runner to third base for Henry Rodriguez. The fans make a little more noise as Henry Rodriguez comes to bat. He's playing first base. Breaking ball for a ball to Rodriguez. 
He's hitting 286, second to Sammy Sosa in home runs in the National League. 25, 70 runs batted in. play off to the left and he's trying to at least get a fly ball here Jeff to bring a run in absolutely with a runner in third and less than two outs you want to put the ball in play you don't want to hit it back to the pitcher if you can you drive it to the outfield or you hit safely but Henry Rodriguez is having a terrific year and that's that confidence factor all of a sudden you believe in yourself when you get to the major league level one of the biggest problems you have is mental do I really belong that's right back to the pitcher dropped by Jones and he gets the out at first on Rodriguez. And that was a tough spot for Grizzolonic over at third trying to find the ball. The same thing that the pitcher Bobby Jones was trying to do. What did we just say? Back, back to the pitcher and there it goes right back to Bobby. That is a very nice play by Bobby Jones. That ball was hit a little harder than you think and he had to get his hand down there in a hurry or that might have been off the right knee. But that is one of the places you don't want to hit that ball. You don't want to strike out. You don't want to pop up and you don't want to hit it back to the pitcher. Moises now Lewis hitting 259 with 11 home runs and 51 runs batted in. He's trying to pick up Rizalonic from third. That's a foul ball, one strike. That may have broken the bat, at least it sounded like it. It's kind of a strange sound here in the dome when you hear the ball hit off the bat. It's different, isn't it? The domes are tougher places to play. When pop ups go up, you never take your eye off them, especially a catcher who sees the ball go up over his head, looks for it. If he ever finds it, he never looks away from it. But it is a very different game played inside. With this ceiling, it's a little bit darker background than, say, the Metrodome or at the Kingdome in Seattle. And with a foul ball back to the screen, no balls and two strikes. Moises Alou, the right fielder, is batting with two gone. Against right handed pitchers, Alou has hit 236, 338 against the left handers. You know what I like about Moises? He's a leader. He's a guy who really plays the game hard. He's had some terrible injuries. And to come back from that broken leg he had in 93 to have the year he had in 94. And won the All-Star game with a hit. Lays off the breaking ball. One ball and two strikes. And to have a guy who has come back from injuries and knows what it is to rehab to come back and to play the game with the same uh, zeal that he does, uh, I think the young players can follow that. And they do. When he's out of the lineup, only 19 wins and 33 losses. Two balls and two strikes on Eldo. How much of that comes from upbringing, from following the example his father has set all these? Oh, years. a lot of it. Uh, you're talking about one of the quality people in this game. Felipe Alou is a wonderful gentleman. A drive into left field. That one is kissed, and it is long gone. Nothing Montreal on home run number 12 by Moises Alou. Well, John the count got to two and two, and Bobby Jones was trying to locate a fastball somewhere other than where he threw it. He did not intend that ball to be in the middle of the plate up. Moises Alou really gets on top of high fastballs, and that ball is up in the strike zone. And you can watch him. Watch him get the head of the bat through on that ball. Here it comes again. See how high the pitch is. It's above the belt. And Moises Alou got the head of that bat through very quickly. One ball and no strikes on Darren Fletcher. So Alou picks up Grizzolanic after two outs. Two extra base hits in the inning so far off Bobby Jones, who has just allowed his 16th home run. You saw Alou's 12th home run of the year. He has 53 runs batted in. Off speed pitch swung on and missed by Fletcher. He has seven homers and 40 RBIs. Not hitting quite as well as he has the past couple of years, but has done a terrific job behind the plate for the Expos. The count moves to two balls, one strike with nobody on and two out. A manager loves to have a catcher, first of all, who can hit, but he loves to have a catcher who can hit left handed too. It's kind of a luxury for him. Right back to the pitcher, Bobby Jones. Fletcher is out, but two extra base hits in the inning and two runs home on a homer by Moises Alou. After one in Montreal, the Expos are leading the New York Mets 2 0 on Fox Saturday afternoon baseball. 
Monday. I'm gonna die! My wife and my kids! The season finale that can't be missed. L.A. Firefighters, Monday at 9, 8 Central. Bobby Jones gave up a two-run homer to Moises Alou in the bottom of the first inning. So the Expos are out to a 2 nothing lead with the Mets coming to bat in the second. And their catcher, Todd Hundley, is leading off. One ball and no strikes on Hundley. You mentioned having a catcher who can bat left-handed. Here's a catcher who's a switch hitter. Uh, he's a kid who works so hard, John, to be where he is. Two balls and no strikes and a good hitting count for Todd Hundley. I know you say that everybody works hard, but this kid came up to the big leagues with a veteran pitching staff with a lot of big names on that staff. There's a strike. They count at two and one. And in that pressure cooker of New York, you know, that with so much media, have a lot of coverage, he had to learn all that staff and feel it, try to feel it home. Three balls and a strike now. Not to mention try to be able to throw the ball properly, catch the ball well, take a game plan into a game, and then try to hit on top of it. But this kid has really made great strides. Popped him up. The catcher, Darren Fletcher, has a play as he moves back to the screen. One catcher takes care of the other. Hundley is out. Alex Ochoa collected the sixth cycle in Mets history on July 3rd in Philadelphia. Five for five night, and he talked about the thrill of hitting for the cycle. I've never done it in my life before, and, uh, you know, the last, that, that fourth at bat, you know, the home run, um, I didn't even, I mean, I thought about it a little bit, but and I wasn't up there trying to hit the home run, and it came out, and it was a, a great thrill. Ochoa had a homer, triple, two doubles, and a single. Kevin McReynolds was the last Met to hit for the cycle at St. Louis August 1st, 1989. A ball of no strikes on the former Baltimore Oriole prospect involved in the Bobby Bonilla trade. This was a very smart trade. They're able to get a youngster. That's out of play to the right side. In fact, get two youngsters in that deal. Damon Buford was in that deal coming from the Orioles over, along with Alex Ochoa. Two of their good young prospects. Both ran well. Both knew how to play the game. Ochoa is what you call a five-tool player. He can do it all. Great arm, can run. It's this one on the right side again in foul territory. No play for Henry Rodriguez and nothing doing for Al Lowe. One ball and two strikes. And when a club is struggling, if you remember, John, back in 1992 and 93, we had a great big payroll when I was managing the Mets, $44.5 million. We couldn't play very well, and then we had 15 surgeries on top of that. We were just a mess. Lifted in play this time to right field. Ross is out. Ochoa is out number two. But Husky will come up with nobody on base. Now I say a mess that was not a pun we were terrible and what happened was with all those surgeries and all those guaranteed contracts we could not trade anybody nobody wanted a big money player and nobody wanted somebody who was a rehab player so slowly the Mets then had to make their young kids force feed them through the system a little bit and Butch Husky is one of those guys Butch came to spring training with me in 1993 when I was managing and really was impressive but he weighed 270 at age 21. One ball and no strikes. I'll tell you, he has done terrific amount of work to get into playing shape, and now he has taken over playing first base with Rico Bronia on the disabled list. Fastball <laughs> strike called. Husky with a count of one ball, one strike. And how difficult is it in New York, Jeff, to try to develop talent where the fans want a winner right now? It is tough. Off speed pitch for ball two. I found, of course, I was a coach for the Yankees for 10 years, and it was win now. You couldn't wait, and you couldn't develop. Now, the Mets have developed on a couple of other occasions, of course. And that's a hit down the right field line. Now, look, watches it go under his glove. Husky's going to get second base out of it. He's in scoring position with two outs. And Alfonso, the eighth place hitter, comes up representing the tying run. Now that is a classic example of how mature Butch Husky has become. He's playing out of position. He's also played right field, but he'll take this ball to right field. Watch him go for the ball on the outside part of the plate and drive it to right field. He used to pull everything. Toby Harrow was his manager a year ago at Norfolk and really worked with him on spreading out his stance and getting the, the stance so he could hit the ball to right field. He hit the thing so hard that it went down that line so quickly that it went by Moises Alou. And so Butch ends up at second base. It's a single and an error on Alou, allowing Husky second base. Joe Kerrigan, the Montreal pitching coach, went out to the mound to talk to Kurt Reeder, who has given up a hit with two down. 
And that has happened in both innings. Jones got a single in the first inning as Chris Jones singled to right field, but was left on base when Kent was denied extra bases on a fine catch by Floyd. And then with two outs, a base hit by Husky here, and he's in scoring position on the miscue. Ball one inside to Edgardo Alfonso, batting 236. He does not have a home run. Eight runs batted in, making his sixth start of the year at shortstop. He has started 12 times at second base, six more at third base. That's high. Two balls and no strikes on the eighth place hitter. The pitcher, Bobby Jones, is on deck. Yes, this is a situation that when I went over to the National League as a manager after leaving the White Sox in the American League, I kind of want to, I don't want to mess around with the eighth place hitter. I want to walk him. And ball three, three balls and no strikes. And it looks like what Reader wants to do right now with Alfonso with Jones coming up. Well, I was even afraid to pitch carefully. I'm get to thinking, boy, I want to get to that pitcher. I don't want to give up any runs, but it really changes the whole lineup around if you keep walking the eighth place hitter. That's right called. That was a borderline call going Reader's way. And there's Bobby Jones. Of course, everybody knows the stats on everybody on a ball club, and they look over in the on-deck circle, and they know Bobby Jones is standing there. He's not a very good hitter. Into right field. Alou has the play. Makes the catch. It's Alfonso on a 3-1 count flies to right, leaving Husky in scoring position. We played an inning and a half, with Montreal leading the Mets 2-0. Fox Saturday Baseball is brought to you by the new Dodge. We're thinking ahead by Zantac 75, the final word in acid relief. By Sears, come see the many sides of Sears. And by Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. From Olympic Stadium in Montreal, 2 0, the Expos are leading the Mets, and that's Joe Kerrigan. Kerrigan made a visit to the mound to talk with Kurt Reeder as Edgardo Alfonso came up with two men out, and here's our conversation. Want to know to set up on every pitch, okay? Sure. Mainly away, this guy leaks. If you do throw the ball in, make sure it's in off the plate, okay? Right. We got Jones on deck, who's not a very good hitter, okay? Right. Every pitch set up 0-2. Here we go. That's very interesting because he was talking, and you'll see what he's doing to keep the ball away, meaning 0-2 means don't throw anything near the middle of the plate. In fact, that was too good a pitch. They got lucky to get away with that, but he also said the hitter leaks means he kind of comes off the ball to the uh, inside. Montreal bats in the second inning now, leading two to nothing. F.P. Santangelo, the center fielder, is hitting 275, three homers and 31 runs batted in. And that's high, a 2 0 count as Bobby Jones walks behind, or, or works behind the leadoff man. He didn't walk anybody in the first, but he did give up a couple of extra base hits, a double by Grizzolanic, and then a lose home run with two outs. Right down the middle of the strike, two balls and a strike. John, I'd like to go back to what Joe Kerrigan said. He went out to the mound, and he was definite the way he wanted it pitched. Don't mess around on the inside part unless you go way in and stay away. Three balls and a strike now on Santangelo. Because I've been in some of those meetings going out to the mound and talked to the pitcher when I was catching, and whoever came out to the mound every once in a while was saying, well, don't walk him, but don't let him hit the ball. You don't say that. You go out and say, this is what I want very dogmatically. And that's a walk. Santangelo takes a free ticket to first base, leading off to second. Well, the Floyd comes up. Well, how about as a manager going out and telling a pitcher exactly what you want, and then the pitcher does what you told him not to do? <laughs> well, that's a human element. Yeah, in fact, they almost made a mistake because uh, Kirk Reeder's pitch was too much on the plate because what Joe Kerrigan said was set up 0-2, meaning like having no balls and two strikes on the hitter where you're going to miss with the ball away, and that ball had a little too much of the plate. But Boy, when somebody goes out and tells you exactly what he wants, there's no doubt in your mind. Cliff Floyd with a one ball, no strike count as Bobby Jones is struggling to find the strike zone. John, this is a very, very good looking young player. He's big. He's 6'4. He's 220. He could run. He's got power. He is a very good young player, Clifford Floyd. Save at first base. Santangelo has two steals while being caught twice this season. And Husky is holding for the Mets. Red dot at first base. That's the runner, F.P. Santangelo. He has a good lead. Jones, with a step off, wants to shorten that lead a little bit. 
Anything you can do as a pitcher, step off, hold the ball. Now he stepped off and then faked. Uh, I think the Oakland Ball Club for many years with Tony La Russa and Dave Duncan taught that. Step off quickly to see if somebody's moving. You're trying to get a read to see if anybody's going at first. That's a ball, two balls and no strikes. And Holly's going to walk out and have a word with Bobby Jones now just to try to calm him or at least uh, interrupt the pace that's, that has been established here, Jeff, with a base on balls and now a 2-0 count. Yeah, absolutely. This is this is what you really like to see with a young catcher going out with his pitcher. Last year, Cliff Floyd went down with an injury, and we have the play where he had to go on the disabled list and come back with a long rehab. Let's take a look at it. And this is Todd Hundley hitting. The throw will be into the line, and Todd crashes into Clifford's wrist. He breaks it in seven places. Terrible, terrible injury, but he's made a tremendous recovery. He had three surgeries on that wrist in order to get it back to where he can play now. And has stepped into the outfield. Into center field. Lance Johnson started in, but he makes the adjustment and makes the catch. It's amazing what good speed will do for you, Jeff, where an outfielder can misread the swing or just misinterpret what's happening yet get back to the warning track or close to it and make the play you got that right John I'll tell you why that you read the ball as an outfielder off the bat that watch this swing if you get a shot of this swing the way now you actually see Lance going back on he broke in two steps and just outran the ball over his head but Clifford Floyd swung down on that ball and the thing took off and I think that's what surprised Lance Johnson Dave Silvestri Third baseman, formerly with the Yankee organization, hitting eighth. A 231 batter with no homers, 11 runs batted in. And Santangelo at first base, one out. And safe at first base, Santangelo. I've watched Dave Silvestri play for a couple of years. He's a good player. He's got a little pop in his swing. He doesn't have any home runs this year, but I remember a pinch hit home run for the Yankees last year against the Red Sox. And I believe won a ball game, but he's got a little pop in his swing. Runner at first base is Santangelo with the leadoff base on balls. Floyd is lined out for the only out. The ball, one ball, no strikes. As Jones continues to work behind the Montreal hitters in the second inning. Two nothing lead for Montreal. Boy, every time I see that play at first base where the throws into the runner and the first baseman has to reach in for the ball, I, my heart stops. Do you remember the one that we were? I was managing the White Sox. You were broadcasting. The ball hit Frank Thomas in the mouth on one of those. Nice play at third base, but he can't to get the out at second. A close play, but Santangelo is out. And now let's go to Hollywood for an update with Chip Carey. Chip. Okay, guys, thanks a lot. Boy, is Reggie Jefferson red hot for the Red Sox? Coming into today's game, 16 for his last 29. His first at bat against Rocky Coppinger just over the outstretched glove of Luis Polonia. A solo home run to left, and the Red Sox lead the O's one to nothing. Back to you. All right, Chip, thank you. It doesn't take a very long blast to get the ball out of there, does it? <laughs> That's an exciting ballpark. Jeff Cannon third gets another force out at second as Reeder gets into the force play. So the Expos can't do anything with the leadoff walk. They leave a man on. And after two, Montreal leads the Mets 2 nothing. Here again, the pitching coach for the Expos on your left. As Montreal's leading the Mets 2 to nothing, Bobby Jones will lead off. Pitcher against pitcher now in the third inning. Lance Johnson, Jose Vizcaino will follow. Hits solidly toward the gap in left center field. And Jones has helped his goals. He has a stand-up double, leading off the third inning for New York as the Mets are down by two. Well, it never fails. I said he was not a good hitter, but at least Joe Kerrigan said the same thing. <laughs> and a little different situation up there swinging, leading off an inning. Right. That pitch is, hey, that's on the lower part of the outside part of the plate, and Bobby Jones went out and got it and hit it up the gap. That ball was hit hard. Shows how much I know about this game, right? He adds to his 061 average. But Jones sets up at second base. Lance Johnson is the batter. He's a good first ball, fastball hitter. And worked him down and away. Larry Anderson, former pitcher, used to say if he's a good fastball hitter, do you throw him a bad one? <laughs> well, it's you know, it's true. Sometimes you want to throw to a guy's strength to make him hit into your defense. That's just off the corner. One ball, one strike. Lance Johnson, though, for a left-handed batter, it's a high fastball with the best of them. 
Only player to lead his league in triples four straight years, but with the White Sox 91 through 94, and almost led the league last year. There's a strike as Reader continues to work away from Lance Johnson. Lance Johnson got three triples in the next to last day at Minnesota to tie Kenny Lofton, and then Lofton got a triple on the last day to win the triples title and dethrone Lance. Of course, one of the triples at the Metrodome kind of got lost up in the roof. Tap toward third. It's a fair ball. And that's down the line. Jones is being waved around. Johnson will go to second base, and the Mets have cut the lead in half. Silvestri's throw went wide, and the Mets have a run in, and Johnson in scoring position. John, what did we just say about the throw into the runner? One of the most dangerous plays in the game, and here it comes, and you see what speed does for you. Because they knew Lance hit that little trickler, Silvestri comes up throwing this ball, and the ball is into the runner. Henry Rodriguez tries to dive over. Now look at this. Here's a little shooter down the third base line. Silvestri makes a nice play. Very tough play off balance, and the throw is up the line, as you can see. Tough, dangerous play, but that's what speed will do for you. It scored a hit for Johnson, and an errant throw by Silvestri allows Jones to score and Johnson to move to second base. So the Mets have two hits in the inning, a run in, tying run at second for Jose Vizcaino. Vizcaino was called out on strikes in the first inning, facing Reader. And showing bunt, Vizcaino takes ball one. Now this is one situation that the left handed pitcher has to be very careful of and that is with a good base runner at second base it's easier to steal third base against a, with a left handed pitcher on the mound than any other situation. Johnson swiped third here last night and reader is paying attention to him. In fact Johnson swiped second and third in the same sequence. He has 27 steals while being caught six times. Sometimes it's not exactly the steal that worries you see thought of it and if Lance Johnson dances around it might affect reader. Johnson bluffed the move and a foul ball out of play one ball one strike on Vizcaino but speed's going to shake up your whole defense infield and outfield. Jim. Oh it really does and you can see what just happened on that ball Lance that was not a very good swing that he took and the ball just chopped down the third base line. Dave, Dave Silvestri knows he's got to get to the ball in a hurry and make a good throw and he rushes everything. Well the same is true at second base. The pitchers worry about the base runners and they might not throw the ball over the plate properly. Reader again looks to second base to Lance Johnson who didn't quite have as big a lead then as he did when he bluffed the move on the last pitch. Well sometimes that's when you better worry about him because they'll cut the lead back a little because they know they can time the pitcher and then they'll go. And then Johnson will get the walking lead and go mm -hmm. for third base. Walking off to a lead not second Lance Johnson. Bought on the third base side Silvestri with the play. This one works a sacrifice going 5 3. Lance Johnson takes third. He's there with one out. Chris Jones, Jeff Kent coming up after that. No, I like this. This is inside baseball. You, you tell your man, such as this guy, and you'll see what he's going to do. He's going to lay down a perfect bunt. And there it is, and that's a very nice play by Silvestri. He knows what's already happened the play before that. But you tell your hitter. With a runner at second base, we've got to get the runner to third. If you don't feel you can hit the ball to the right side of the infield, then drop the bunt down. Make sure you get him over there. I want that runner at third base with less than two outs. Big swing and a miss by Chris Jones going for the long ball. Lance Johnson at third base now. When you were with the White Sox, so when Lance was in the minor leagues and before you made the Harold Baines deal with Texas, bringing Sammy Sosa and Scott Fletcher over. Swing and a miss for strike two. He didn't have much team speed at all and really changed how you could manage your game once you had better than a station to station club. Absolutely. Speed that you can, it never slumps. You bring it to the ballpark every day. And in one fell swoop over there with the White Sox, we made a trade and brought Lance Johnson up. Just outside. Reader almost had the kill on three pitches. One ball, two strikes on Chris Jones. We made a trade with Texas. We got Sammy Sosa and brought Lance Johnson up. Two thirds of our outfield could fly. Here's a pop up short left center field. Rizalonic is under it and no chance for Johnson to come down the line. And throw it all the way through to the plate and Jones pops out two gone. Now as a manager you sit in the dugout you got a runner at third base. You got less than two outs you got a big power hitter up you're saying please drive the ball to the outfield well up. Chris Jones just missed that ball now. It could be that ball was just a little too high but he just missed that ball he got under a little too much and it only popped up to shortstop. 
You know, this is a game of inches. That ball is down a little bit. That might be driven into the alley, or at least a fly ball sacrifice fly. And as a manager, you've already given up an out on the sacrifice. Yes. To set up that situation, and you're hoping and hoping Jones comes through. That time he didn't. Jeff Kent flied out last time up. A ball height. You're feeling on bunting early in a ball game and giving up an out. Right after Johnson had reached on a single and an error, could be a big inning in the making. Well, it depends on who you have at the plate and who the pitcher is for the opposition. If you feel you're not going to score a lot or that's the way you play, then you want to make sure you give yourself an advantage. Strike called again, one and one. And get that runner over to third base because you're in the middle of your order. You're in your three, four, five hitters. But, you know, there are a lot of people that don't believe in the bunt. But uh, I, I like the bunt depending on who the hitter is. Then again, Gene Mock liked the bunt anywhere, anytime, anyplace. Anytime. Get a lead and then add to it. The Mets are trying to tie the game. Over the middle. And that's going to get it done. Kent singles in Lance Johnson. A 2 2 ball game here in the top half of the third inning in Montreal. For Kent, RBI number 37. So he has hit the ball hard two times, once in the air for an out, caught by Floyd for the last out of the first. And here, an artificial turf. Bounding ball up the middle. Way to do it. Nice it's one of those uh, you can hear in the dugout saying how happy they are with Lance, and, and that's great to go to a guy who they, he got on by an error, but he hustles and he makes things happen, and they appreciate that. That's as big as a home run to him, and that is great. Don Hundley fouled out to his counterpart, Darren Fletcher, in the second inning. And when a team appreciates that and shows that appreciation, everybody will try to do the same thing, do the little things. Can't is safe at first base. He has three steals, caught three times. But Lance Johnson making it to third base. Chris Jones failed to bring him in, and Kent picked him up. But yet Lance was in position there where he could score any number of ways. That's right. A strike call. That might sound a little bit trite, but with Lance's speed, even at a ball that hits in the dirt and rolls away four or five feet, he has a chance to come down the line to score. Absolutely. I'll tell you, exciting base running gets a, a ball club's dugout as excited as a home run. Way inside. Two balls and one strike on Hunley. Switch batter batting right handed here. When the individuals on a ball club start appreciating the little things, getting and moving a guy over, a good sacrifice bunt, a good defensive play, an outstanding race running play by taking an extra base, you've got the job done as a manager. You say, okay, they know how to play and they appreciate it. Big swing and a miss that time by Hunley. Two balls and two strikes. From those I've talked to have covered the Mets or followed the Mets and watched them Jeff they feel that there's a nice fit in the clubhouse. That with Lance Johnson coming in he has been a nice addition Ochoa coming up the last couple of weeks has fit right into their puzzle there. Can't is safe again at first base. Boy, you're not kidding. But there is something to chemistry. Oh. And, and some will tell you you're crazy Jeff but I, how many teams that win fail or, or how many teams that actually go on and win have bad chemistry. They don't normally you get that because it's not a team if you have problems in the clubhouse. The count goes to two make the three balls two strikes three and two on Hundley with a man on and two out. When you don't have it is when you realize how important it is. But when you take a young team and Dallas has got a young team we talked to him about it yesterday he's got a young team that never quite gets gets down they just know only one way to play and that's hard. Ball four. So Kent pulls up at second base. Hundley takes the walk. And the first walk allowed by Reeder today. He hasn't walked all that many. 19 walks now in about 75 innings of work. You know, an awful lot was written about the Mets early in the year. And we started to talk about it in the opening about how so much uh, had been said about their three young pitchers, Paul Wilson, uh, Pulsifer, and Isringhausen. Now, of course, Pulsifer went out very early. He's out for the year. Wilson has a tender shoulder. He was the hardest thrower of the bunch. They were talking about Jay Payton, one of their minor league outfielders, had surgery on his arm. Achoa. And an awful lot of pressure is applied to them, but I'll tell you, before it's over, they're going to be good. Swing and a high fly ball by Achoa. Out in the short left. Rosalonic gives way to Floyd. Left Floyd retires Achoa. Achoa is 0 for 2. But two runs scored, helped out with an error. It's a 2 2 ball game as we go to the bottom of the third in Montreal. There's at the park here in Montreal enjoying the Expos and Mets in a 2 2 ball game. An interesting one as we move to the bottom of the third and top of the order for Montreal. Rosalani takes a hook for a strike from Bobby Jones. Two runs on two hits in the first inning allowed by Jones. 
Right back through the middle, and that's hit number 113 for Mark Bruzzolani. Bruzzolanic is going to be going to the All-Star Game in his second season, and what a thrill for him. Let's listen. It, it, it's a thrill. I, I just, you know, it just happened so quickly in my life right now, and my just just being on my second year, uh, it, it's something that that just a total treat for me to, to even be in the same breath as some of these Gwens and Piazzas and and Bouchettes, and I mean, it's just an unbelievable feeling. I, you know, it, it's sometimes like. You know, I was saying earlier, really, it's you just got to step back and just take everything in for a minute. And that is this really is it reality? Is this happening to me? I mean, it's it's a thrill though. And here's Lansing taking a ball outside, and let's put Gruzelonic's name in with Tony Gwynn. Yep, because not since 1989 as a National League hitter collected 200 or more hits, and Gwynn had 203 in 1989. Gruzelonic has 113 now. And a step off here by Bobby Jones with Gruzelonic at first base and Lansing the batter. That's pretty good company to be talking about, but this kid knows how to play the game and he uses this artificial turf field well. You know, he shoots the ball all over the field, hits a lot of ground balls. Slider strike call, one ball and one strike. And that's been a good combination at the top of the order for the Expos. Gruzelonic at 320 and in the National League rankings sixth and run scored at 65 and here's Lansing backing him up with a 313 average knows how to handle the bat can move a runner along. There's a lot of safe at first base nobody out in the third a 2 2 ball game between the Mets and the Expos. They are a real luxury for Felipe Alou to have because they both can run as you say they both can they're aggressive players they can steal bases they can handle the bat hit the ball the other way. They absolutely make things happen and set the table for their big guns in the middle of the order. A big thing. They have been in the lineup, Jeff, between them. Ruzalonic and Lansing have missed seven starts. Yes, and Mark Ruzalonic, uh, on a very unhappy note, left because his grandfather passed away. That breaking ball misses inside to Lansing. Two balls and a strike, and will we see a little running and hitting here? He easily could. I'll tell you, Felipe Alou is a very aggressive manager. He manages with a... Uh, a confidence that his players kind of take from him. You know, we've talked about what kind of guy he is. I mean, he's almost like an aristocrat. He is a, he's 61 years old and they listen when he speaks. That's popped out of play. Gruzelonic left to move towards second base, but he wasn't going to run on that pitch unless it had been put in fair play. And you look back and you, and you see Felipe giving signs to Jerry Manuel at third base. You remember what kind of, and there's Jerry relaying the signs. He's waiting for the runner at first to look up. But you think about what kind of player Felipe Alou was. That's the way he played. He played hard. He was one of the strongest players in the game. But Jeff, he's managing the same way now that he managed in the minor leagues. I was working in the American Association in the early 80s when he was at Wichita, later with Denver. With the runner going on the 2 2 pitch, a foul ball will send Gruzelanik back to first base. But it's amazing how Felipe is doing the same things now that he did in the minor leagues. He likes to be out there pitching batting practice and taking fungos and walking around the outfield talking with his players and being right in the middle of the whole mix. Absolutely. People will say do you manage in a different way for a younger ball club. Well maybe you do you have to do more teaching you pat him a little bit a little bit more on the back. But you don't treat people any different no matter who what age they are or how much experience they have and Felipe just he had, just talks to everybody the same way. Let the runner go. It's popped up. Bruzzolanic will have to make tracks back to first base. Jeff Cannon, foul ground, puts it away. Lansing is out. We have one down in the third inning. Here is Henry Rodriguez, and he has a rather novel approach to the plate. And let's listen as you find this uh, maybe scientific, huh? <laughs> he used the same bat. Same model. Same model. Same way, same uh, long. I just don't like to use the same bat against right or lefty. That's why I put left and right, you know? Because I don't like to use the same bat against right or lefty. You know, so every time the lefty throwing, I use this bat. If they switch it, I, I use my, my right hand. It's the same bat, no okay. difference. I just don't like to use the same bat against the uh, same bat I use against a righty against a lefty, too. I just don't, don't like to use it. Rodriguez takes a strike, and uh, <laughs> it's a little more dirt on the bat handle of that left handed bat than the right handed. <laughs> He's used it a lot more. I asked him after that, I said, do you hit it on the other side of the bat? He said, no, I hit it in the same place. And I guess obviously he is with 25 home runs. He's using that sweet spot very often. He's 0 for 1 today. Chris Alonik at first with one out. Infield a double play depth for the Mets. Out of play, off to the left for Rodriguez, who was not initially selected for the All-Star team. Yes, after that. Tony Gwynn went out with an injury, Jeff, that's when Bobby Cox and 
the National League president decided to add Rodriguez to the roster. Well, obviously he showed that he was a little disappointed, but he said he understood there are so many other good players out there. It's so difficult for the managers to make a decision. There's not enough rooms on that room on that roster for the good players. Play outside, one ball and two strikes with one out. Off right-handed pitchers, Rodriguez has hit 20 of his 25 home runs. Sammy Sosa is ahead of Rodriguez in home runs, and he's not going to the All-Star game. Steve Traxel is going to be the Cub representative Tuesday night in Philadelphia. Bobby Jones on the mound for the Mets. And with the step off, Ruzalonic goes back to first base. He's there with one out. Ruzalonic was running when Lansing popped out. Foul territory to Jeff Kent. Henry Rodriguez has a 1 2 count with one away. Part of this that you're seeing here is Bobby Jones, yes, keeping the runner close, but it also can throw a hitter off. You step off, you take time. The hitter does not get in a rhythm either. So it it really is a two-edged sword. And out on strikes, Henry Rodriguez. That's the first strikeout today for Bobby Jones. Rosalonic is at first with two outs and Alou coming up. And let's take a look at strike three now on Rodriguez. Well, this is a fast one, the outside part of the plate that was a two-seamer that kind of ran away from him, ran to the open side. And a lot of times you say, well, Bobby Jones is big. He doesn't overpower you with 90-some mile-an-hour fastballs. But after you've seen a lot of other pitches, off-speed pitches, it's all relative. You can throw an 88-mile-an-hour pitch past somebody. Arch, just where you locate the ball. Yes. And that's what happened with Bobby Jones running his pitch away from Rodriguez. Allo was jammed and fouls it off. And in the first inning, Alou put Montreal on the scoreboard in this fashion. The only question was how far back on that home run by Alou is 12th of the year. 53 runs batted in for the Montreal right fielder. But the Mets came back with two runs of their own in the top of the third. It's a 2 2 game now with two gone in the home half. To the shortstop. Alfonso bobbles the ball but gets the play at second base on Gruzelanik. 6 4 on the force play. No runs and a leadoff hit with one left on. It's a 2 2 first baseman Butch Husky. Husky the first time up got on on a base hit to right field moved up on an air by Moises Alou. It happened with two outs and the Mets couldn't bring him in. That's fisted foul off to the right. In Ochoa's game when he hit for the cycle the same contest Butch Husky had a single a triple and a home run. It has never happened where teammates hit for the cycle in the same game. The count goes to two balls and a strike. John, when I was talking about Butch Husky, when I knew him as a younger player in the minor leagues when I was managing the Mets, he stood more upright, his feet closer together, and he hit the ball from the middle end. That's pounded on the ground to Silvestri. One down in the fourth inning. And let's go to Hollywood now and Chip Carey for an update. Chip. Guys, thanks a lot. You you know about Cleveland's troubles last night. Shut out for the first time all year. 7-0 by the White Sox. Well, they won't be shut out today. Bottom of the fourth inning, Jim Tomey hits a solo shot to left. His 16th of the year. The Tribe leads at 1-0 with Charles Nagy facing the minimum through four. And back and forth they go. Cleveland and the White Sox. One strike the count on Alfonso. Here's a smash up the middle and off the glove of Grizzolanik into left center field. Alfonso is on with one out in the fourth. It's a base hit for Alfonso. And how quickly does that ball shoot through in the artificial turf here in Montreal? Well, you can see Grizzolanik is not happy with that. He kind of dove, half dove for the ball, and the ball came up on him a little bit. It got there so fast. Here's Alfonso's swing. Breaking ball on the outer part of the plate, and it's a one-hop shot at Gruzelanik, he kind of dove for it, and it got there quicker than he figured. Good extension. Here he dives for the ball, and it just kind of comes up a little bit. Bobby Jones with the bunt. Reader has to field it. Lansing covers the bag, and the sacrifice sends Alfonso to second in scoring position. The go-ahead run there with two out. For Jones, that's his fourth sacrifice bunt this season. Do you think Dallas was thinking the percentages were against him, let him swing away after his double, which... 
It's a little different situation, with the <laughs> Bulldog, isn't it? It's a different. It's a different game over in this league when you get to the bottom of the order. Yes. Lance Johnson has a hit and a run scored. One out of two. Johnson last night went two for five. After an 0 for 5 game on Thursday. Jack swing foul over to the Mets dugout on the third baseline. As you get a shot at Lance Johnson, he looks real thin. He looks small and thin. For anybody that knows about weight like weight training, he can bench press 350 pounds, if you can believe that. That's how strong he is. He has five multi hit games in his last six after taking the 0 for on Thursday. Came back with two last night. And the strike. Brings the count to 0-2 on Lance Johnson. And the baseball purists will say, well, why does he need to do that? His game is speed. It certainly doesn't hurt to be able to turn on the ball occasionally and stay stronger, avoid injuries. That's where weight training has really helped the everyday player. Well, it doesn't hurt to have a Ricky Henderson in a leadoff role hit a home run. The same for Kenny Lofton in Cleveland. They do, and Lance Johnson did last year for the Chicago White Sox. Now in a New York Met uniform, behind in the count here, one and two. Right back to the mound, and Reader makes the catch of the line drive, retiring Johnson, leaving Alfonso on second base. No runs ahead. One left. We played three and a half in Montreal with the New York Mets and the Montreal Expos in a 2 2 game with Saturday afternoon baseball on Fox. After the top of the fourth inning, a 2 2 game, the Mets and the Expos, it's the home half of the fourth. Darren Fletcher, the catcher, will lead off. Bobby Jones gets ahead of Fletcher. Fletcher bounced back to the mound, ending the first inning. Two runs in the first for Montreal, two in the third for New York, with the help of an error along the way. That's a foul ball over toward the right side. Here at Olympic Stadium in Montreal for an 0 2 count. There's Darren Fletcher, Big Ten Player of the Year while playing for the Fighting Illini of Illinois before turning pro. He's done a good job in his career. He's seem to get better and better and you know a young catcher it's tough because you have to learn your pitching staff first before you do anything offensively. He caught a no hitter when he was with the Phillies and I believe I think it was Mulholland's no hitter with the Phillies. Yes. That's a thrill for a young catcher. You would know. Up the middle and a base hit to center field for Fletcher. The leadoff man has been on base all four innings against Bobby Jones. And that's really living on the edge. Jim. Now that's another one of those artificial turf hits. That ball just kind of bounced and bounced and bounced. And when you're playing on this carpet, it's like playing on a uh, green freeway. Here's the pitch from Bobby Jones. It's an off-speed pitch that he hangs a little bit. And actually, Darren Fletcher doesn't get a real good swing at it, but it's hitting the right place. And it just, as you can see, it just boom, 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 boom on the carpeting to the outfield. That's how it goes, too. It does. <laughs> and there's nothing the middle infielders can do about it. Santangelo comes to bat for the second time. He's fisted and out of play it goes on the foul ball. A walk in the second inning to Santangelo, and that was a leadoff walk. The Expos didn't do anything with that. He's a good player, John. He stepped in here. When you lose your center fielder, they lost Rondell White to an injury. When you lose a, a center fielder who really makes your club go, and you can see Felipe Alou looking out at his ball club, and he's having fun. You can even smile during the game. Sometimes he's chewing the fingernails, as most managers do, but. He's replaced that center fielder pretty well. I like the way all three outfielders go after it. Uh, we saw Cliff Floyd earlier in this game, and then in right field, Moises Alou, he's going to go right along with Santangelo, and uh, they'll probably lead the league in rug burns. You're not kidding, you have to. This is a tough place to play, too. You can all, you know, you continue to play on, on real hard artificial turf, and it takes its toll on your legs, on your back. Uh, your feet get tired. One ball and two strikes on F.P. Santangelo. Santangelo played at the uh, University of Miami. There's another good college program. You're seeing a lot more college players now. Uh, and, and one of the things we stress at this particular point is the Olympics coming up and just picking that Olympic team. Be interesting to see how many of those Olympians are in the big leagues in short order because the last year's Olympic team or the last Olympic team got here in a hurry. In fact, uh, Dave Silvestri was a former Olympian. It was the third baseman today for the Expos. Santangelo batting with one on and nobody out in the fourth. 2-2 two -two score. And that big swing and a miss strikes out Santangelo. 
Let's go back to Chip Carey in Hollywood to get another update, Chip. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Good ball game going on down at Camden Yards in Baltimore. The Rocket, Roger Clemens, 1-1 game, fastball, belt high. And Rafael Palmer deposits that out near Food Pals Barbecue. It's 2-1, and Bird's in the bottom of the third. Back to you. So Palmero goes yard for a two to one lead. And here a two two ball game. Santangelo just struck out. Cliff Floyd comes to bat with a man on. Out of play off to the left. American League Eastern Division standings with the New York Yankees leading by six over Baltimore. After today one day to the All Star break. The Blue Jays under the 500 mark 15 out. The Red Sox are 16 back. Buddy Bell's Tigers 26 and a half out. 26 and 60 record. I thought when you lost 56 games with the White Sox in 89, I thought that was good. I did too. I tried to beat myself to death with a rosin bag. It didn't work, unfortunately. But <laughs> I'd like to see that. <laughs> a line drive caught at first base and a double play. Fletcher is caught off first and nothing he could do about it with Husky grabbing the screaming liner by Floyd and doubling up the Montreal catcher. 2 2 ball game in Montreal. All. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or transmitted in any form without express written consent, as Dallas Green agrees with me. 2-2 <laughs> two -two game. We head to the fifth inning. The New York Mets batting and a strike called as Reeder gets one in. Jose Vizcaino leading off. 0 for 1, a strikeout and a sacrifice. He was jammed. And that's caught at first by Henry Rodriguez. David Segui is out of the lineup with a thumb injury, a hand injury, and Rodriguez fills in nicely here at first base, doesn't he, Jeff? Sure does. This is a nice play. This this is the type of ball that gets hammered off your hands. It doesn't look like it's going to be caught because it's flat, it's kind of just a flare out the other way, and there's nobody there to catch it. But I'll tell you what, this is a very nice play by Henry Rodriguez. He ranged way over to get that ball. Chris Jones. He takes a strike. Jones is playing in left field today. First time up, he singled. Then he, he popped out to the shortstop. This is deep short. Ruzelanik has no throw. Two for three for Chris Jones. Next week on Fox Saturday Baseball, Jeff Bagwell and the Houston Astros, they're going to the Big Apple to take a bite out of Ray Ordonez and the New York Mets. It's exclusive Saturday afternoon baseball beginning at 1230 Eastern right here on Fox Sports. Along with Jeff Torborg, I'm John Rooney at Olympic Stadium in Montreal. Well, that's Frank Pulley, the second base umpire. He says there's something that you can see in the windows down behind home plate, and it's causing the infielders trouble seeing the ball. You know, there's plexiglass down below home plate. And that's a section that was added a few years back to give uh, the Expos more field level seating. Well, Frank is in control. He's a good umpire, and he is a crew chief, and he really runs this whole thing. But there. Uh, this, if we had a clock in the game, that. I think they would say reset the clock, but that doesn't happen in this sport. Now he's coming, everybody down. I don't know what they're doing. We can't see exactly what it is. You do have some lights up, as you can see in the picture frames, and maybe they can't see it, but it could be the uh, the advertisement board that they don't like that they are losing the ball out of. If you get a light background, the infielders and outfielders can't see the ball off the bat. You know, remember a couple years ago when they I started. I think that's the problem, Jeff. That might be it. Oh, that's why he was saying roll it over. There you go. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe he didn't like that product they were advertising. No, I don't think that's right. No. Okay. I started to say, you know, a couple years ago when they started using those black bats a lot, the dark brown bats, a lot of people complained they couldn't see the dark baseball coming off the bat after the ball had been rubbed up. Jones is on first. Here's Jeff Kent. Well, I remember when the Kansas City A's went to white shoes 1966. Mm -hmm. They're playing the Cleveland Indians. The ball low here to Jeff Kent. And we're told it was the advertising signs and that light background that was annoying the middle infielders. But the Cleveland Indians sent up Vic Davalino 
to lead off against the A's. And he protested he couldn't see the pitch coming out of the white shoes. <laughs> Several teams have been wearing white shoes since. The sound over at first base of Chris Jones going back into the bag as Henry Rodriguez is holding against Jones with one on and one out. 2 2 game. We've had a good one here for you from Montreal today. The Mets and the Expos. The Mets have won the first two games in the series 4 0 and 9 to 6. Foul ball back our way. You know, it sounds strange. There is something to that. White shoes for the first time you've seen it on a pitching staff because pitchers are not allowed to have any white on their glove. They can't wear sweatpants. They can't have tape that shows. They can't have a t shirt that sticks out too far. They can't have a ragged sleeve. But I'll tell you that, yeah, the game has changed. You just take a look at Clifford Floyd and the shoes he had on. They look like they're mostly white. It's not uniform anymore, is it? But now here's a uh, reader, and he's got the dark shoes. Maybe he should try that with those multi. It's all a part shoes. of the shoe contract now. <laughs> Ball high. Two balls, one strike. Jeff Kent, one out of two with an RBI single in the third inning. He was with the Toronto Blue Jays and entered the National League with the New York Mets. 37 RBIs with his RBI single in the third inning. Go ahead, run it first, and Chris Jones. With Jones going. That's toward the gap in left center field. And Jones will move on to third. A high bounce for Santangelo. His throw will hold Kent to a single. So Jones was standing, did a good job of base running that time, Jeff, by getting to second, making sure Santangelo could not make the play and double him up. Exactly, John. When you're a base runner and or a first base coach telling you what to do, you're told to go halfway to see where the ball, whether it's going to land, drop, uh, without somebody catching it, or whether it will be caught. So you go halfway so you can still get back, but you can also go ahead. Well, that was a good read because Chris Jones got close to second base and realized where the ball was going to be, and he continued on the third. With Joe Kerrigan on the mound. Kirk Reeder has reached 71 pitches, 44 for strikes, and he's in some trouble here. A double play ball can get him out of trouble, but first and third, one out with Todd Hundley coming up. So Kerrigan is on his way back into the dugout now. You see activity in the Montreal bullpen with Manuel warming up. Todd Hundley is a walk and a foul out. a strike. Let's go to Joe Kerrigan on his last trip to the mound in their discussion. With Kerrigan on the outside. Right. He's a four seamer on this one. All right, give me a good setup early outside, okay? If you do get late in the count with him, he will chase the fastball up, okay? Inner half, okay? So what, what are you saying Let's go for a ground ball. Take a shot, you mean away. Yeah, away with a ground ball, right? Okay, here we go. Joe likes to say okay a lot, but that's the way he talks to me in normal conversation. So uh, he makes it clear, even though they does. weren't sure at the beginning, he wanted to start him away and then go to a four seamer if they got ahead. That means he's going across seam. He wants to run the ball in on Todd Hundley's letters. And they are ahead. Yes. Readers ahead of Hundley. No balls, two strikes. At second or at first base, it's Kent. At third base, Chris Jones. One ball, two strikes. Now what he also said was he said he's vulnerable to chase the ball up. But when you get it up there, you better make sure you get it toward the letters. Because if it's out over the plate, that's where boy, you know, the big power hitters will drive the ball, and Todd is very strong. Fly ball can get the go-ahead run in. Good. Strike three call. Well, they set it up. They talked about setting it up away, then to go back inside, and sure enough, that's what they did. And when we talk about a cross seamer or a, or a four seamer you'll see this maybe you can see the grip on the ball or across and no you can't see it. it's hit in the glove but he comes across the top of the ball and drives it inside right on the money and Todd was not happy pulled off the ball and said no that's not a strike that's inside well how about the movement over the plate of that pitch mm -hmm. two strikeouts for reader and he really needed one there with the go ahead run at third the go ahead run is still at third base, but two out now in the fifth inning for Alex Ochoa. He's 0 for 2 with a pair of flyouts. That's foul on the left field line and out of the stand. Oh! I'll tell you what, that third base, that Chris Jones dove on that ball. He didn't know where it was going. He's the runner at third base, and he was getting out of the way of this one. 
That's Smart a reaction. That's the thing you got to worry about as a coach. You know, you don't think much about it. Coaches are pretty close, and all of a sudden, somebody will pull a bullet down there, and your life's in danger. Reader working with two outs. Put something off that pitch. One ball and one strike. Ochoa with runners in scoring position. Keep in mind, he's been in the big leagues here with the Mets now for two weeks. Eight out of 13, a 615 average with runners in scoring position. Well, the Mets fans have rolled out the red carpet for him. A drive in the left field. That's going to leave the yard. Three run homer, Ochoa. Alex Ochoa's third home run. It comes with two outs, scoring Chris Jones and Jeff Kent. A five to two lead for the Mets here in the fifth. What a way to break in. Of course, he was up with the club the end of last season, but he is red hot, and you can see that the Expo dugout is starting to get some more action. They're on the phone also, and there goes Ochoa, and the two runners ahead of him going back to the dugout. And here's the pitch. The pitch is up in the strike zone, not inside, up and out over, and Ochoa jumped it and parked it way out of here. So that's twice the Mets have failed to score a man from third base with one out, only to have the next batter pick up his teammate. Jam and a foul ball by Husky. That's out of play. Butch Husky bats with two outs. In the third inning, Jeff Kent followed Chris Jones, who popped out to short, failing to bring Lance Johnson in. Then Kent singled to center field to tie the game at two. After Hundley struck out with runners at first and third and one out, a chaw went yard. Well, you just got it out of your mouth about the Mets fans going to roll out the red carpet. I hope the fans go out and see this young club because they're starting to play well. The ball high, the count at three balls, one strike on Husky with Alfonso on deck. I don't want to get into it now, but we will in a while. The differences in managing a young ball club and a veteran club. Strike called Husky. We'll have to pick up the bat, come back for at least one more pitch, three and two. Yeah, you better he better be swinging at this pitch mm -hmm. if it's close after laying that bat down in front of the umpire but Paul Nart uh, doesn't care too much for that. No umpire does. The three two pitch. And that's a hit in the left center field. Floyd will cut it off in the alley and it looked like Husky was going to try to take an extra base. He has to scramble back to the bag. John I love this I love the way the Mets are playing and I know that's also the way the Expos play but they're the Mets are so aggressive Butch Husky just left that batter's box thinking I'm going to second base he was coming around first base like he was going and that is super that's the way to play this game look at him go he was really thinking about taking an extra base but then he stumbled and that's what will happen on this turf because they, while you're in the dirt there are seams right on the edge of the dirt and there's a good chance of tripping over them. Husky is safe at first base. Another thing to point out about the dirt areas after running on solid footing on the carpet and taking the big turn then in the soft dirt, that's where Husky lost his footing. A ball inside, one ball and no strikes on Alfonso. Edgardo has a single and two trips to the plate today. Three runs in for the Mets, four hits in the inning. John, I shouldn't have laughed when he fell down there, but it was cool because as he fell, he tried to act like that's the way he was slowing himself down. To the shortstop, Rosalani feeds second baseman Mike Lansing, retiring Husky coming down. Four hits in the inning, three runs in on the home run by Alex Ochoa, and the Mets lead the Expos 5 to 2. By 7 Eleven. Oh, thank heaven for 7 Eleven. And by Tylenol the pain reliever hospitals use most. From Olympic Stadium in Montreal, the Mets on an Alex Ochoa home run lead the Expos 5 to 2 as we move to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Kirk Reeder gave up the three run homer and it appears he is going to be finished for the day as he came off the field. He was getting the word from Joe Kerrigan, the pitching coach. That's it, Kirk. We're going to hit for you. Well, he's not real happy with it. It's not the decision to come out of the game. It was the decision that, uh, or actually the feeling that he has not pitched a real good game. He has not located well, and that three run home run, of course, knocked him right out of the box. Silvestri will lead off. 
Andy Stankiewicz has come out to the on deck circle to bat for Kirk Reeder. Jones is working with the lead and works ahead in the count here. Getting ahead of Dave Silvestri with a slider. Came right back with a breaking ball and missed one ball and one strike. Silvestri and Stankiewicz, former New York Yankee players. I'm also watching Bobby Jones. Bobby Jones is a very heady pitcher. He he knew how to pitch when he came out of college. He was a, an All-American College Pitcher of the Year at Fresno State. Knew how to pitch when he got into pro ball, and now you can see kind of a maturity in him. Two balls, one strike. He's a type of pitcher that gives you innings as a manager. You always have to have a starter who you can depend on to give you quality starts. And Bobby's that kind of guy. He'll give up a lot of hits and he'll give up some home runs. But he knows how to pitch and he doesn't get flustered. He's on pace to give the Mets 200 innings from his starting spot. Popped up right side. Husky over by the dugout. And he had it for a moment, then the glove hit the dugout roof. Well, that was some effort. Let's hope his wrist is all right. That was a great effort. He's kind of laughing, having fallen in there. When you get around that dugout, you're fair game. I mean, a lot of clubs will try to hold you out of the dugout, but they, you know, they also don't want you to catch the ball. But watch this. Husky gets the ball in the glove, but as his arm hits the top of the dugout, his glove kind of uses like a high life on, just fires that thing up into the stands, makes a fan happy, but not Butch. Here's a really good look at it. Watch. There Point. goes the baseball. There goes Butch. No play. Sylvester with a two and two count. That's out of play and the count holds. Well, we were talking about hustle before. There'll be times that ball clubs who are not hustling will not go into the dugout to catch a pop up. They'll not fall down around going around first base when they're trying to get an extra base. This Mets club is playing with a lot of spirit. It's impressive. Husky at first base, Vizcaino at second, Alfonso at shortstop, Kent at third, the infield for the Mets today. This is for the second baseman, Jose Vizcaino. Silvestri pops out. Andy Stankiewicz is going to bat now. Batting in the pitcher spot. Kirk Reeder went five innings, ten hits, five runs. He walked one, struck out two. Gave up a three run homer to Alex Ochoa. That's the 12th home run allowed by Ritter in about 76, 77 innings. He's hoping his team can pick him up. Right now they're down by three. One out, nobody on. Stankiewicz takes a strike. New York on to Houston. Stankiewicz now with the Expos. As a pinch hitter this year, and he's four out of 13. Ball low. Something you always liked about him with the Mets, Jeff, his attitude, the way he plays the game. You know, he's one of those, he's not a real big guy. He's not a flashy player. All he does is give you all these guys. He's got a big heart, plays the game hard. You really like a player like that. He shoots it to the right side under Husky's glove and a pinch single for Andy Stankiewicz. He was in that Yankee organization for a lot of years, Andy, and uh, he's at first base now. Of course, Louis Pouls is telling him you're three runs down. Check the outfielders. You got one out. That's what the coach says every time you get there. Sometimes the players don't even hear what you're saying, but you try to repeat it. Andy Stankiewicz is a real heady player. He's out of Pepperdine University. Here's Mark Grozelanek, and I brought up a while ago. I wanted to talk about the differences between managing a veteran ball club, managing a young team. Managing a young team is basically what Felipe Alou has had to do since he came here in 1992 to Montreal. It's into short right field, and that's a tough play. It's going to fall for a hit in front of Ochoa. First and second, one out. As Grudzelanek gets his third hit today. 114 hits this season. Well, John, when you got a base hit bat, as they say down in the dugout, everything falls. That ball was up on his hands and jammed the Dickens out of him. As you can see, that ball was down on the bat. That was almost where that circle is on the bat there, and that ball just blooped in the right field. But that's when you're hot, you'll get those balls to fall. Rosalonic has two singles, a double, and a run scored. There's Mike Lansing representing the tying run with the Mets ahead five to two. And yes, you were saying about Felipe Alou, he has had to manage a young team because there's been a major turnover. 
He has been in the minor leagues for many, many years managing. In fact, seven alone at West Palm Beach, and he always was a great teacher, and that's what a young player needs. One strike on Lansing. Lansing is 0 for 1. And the other thing that a manager can make you feel very comfortable that he's pleased that you're on his ball club and that you have confidence in that player. The young player appreciates that. Out of play down the left field line. Well, Dallas Green has managed veteran ball clubs for the most part. Now he has a young Mets team, but his Phillies team won in 1980, beating Kansas City for the World Championship. Put together a, a solid club in Chicago when he was general manager with the Cubs. Went over to the Yankees. Wasn't able to get them into the World Series. But with this Mets team, he's kind of starting over, fitting the right pieces in from development and some trades. And he told them, he said, we've, we've told the guys what to expect. We told them what they have to do. Now they have to make it happen. He sounds like he's having fun with this ball club. He really it, does. It's tougher to manage an older team. They counted one ball and two strikes on Lansing with two on and one away. All it takes when you're managing a young team is a lot of patience. You better be patient. You better be concerned about how these kids are feeling. You better almost be kind of like a, a, a father, a big brother to them. Now, the veteran player doesn't need that as much. Certainly they do when they're not going well, but the game of managing is not so much the strategy going on during the game. It's managing of men in that dugout and in the buses and in the clubhouses and the hotels. Wheel around, no throw to second base. Bobby Jones trying to get around two singles here and keep his five to two lead while the Expos are trying to chip away with Lansing batting. Look into the Mets dugout. That Phillies team with Dallas Green, managing Pete Rose, Mike Schmidt. Bob Boone was behind the plate. Come on, Tug man, McGraw. Come on. Dallas was a pitcher in his playing career. One ball, two strikes. Pounded to third. One, two. Kent to Vizcaino to Husky. And Jones got what he needed the double play ball. Two hits, one left on, three stranded by Montreal. Five to two in favor of the Mets after five. Five to two as we head to the sixth inning here at Olympic Stadium. Ball won the count. The leadoff batter is the pitcher Bobby Jones facing a new pitcher Barry Manuel. Five innings, ten hits, five runs against Kirk Reeder today. Manuel, a right-hander with a 2-0 record, he's out of the bullpen for his 29th game. And he quickly falls behind two balls, no strikes, and he wouldn't walk the pitcher here, would he? Well, he might. It has happened before, and unfortunately, too often, especially when uh, it happens with your ball club. But coming out of the bullpen, you've got to come in there and try to throw strikes, especially to the pitcher. He gets one over, two balls and a strike. Very manual. Pitched three seasons at LSU. Second team All American 1986. To the second baseman, Mike Lansing. Bobby Jones is out. The play goes 4-3. Top of the order now, and Lance Johnson coming up. We've had a couple of long balls in the game. Jones was able to get around a couple of hits with a double play ball. He gave up a home run to Moises Alou earlier, but yet it was a home run by Alex Ochoa that put the Mets in front by the five to two count we have right now. John we've been talking about a young Mets team. Alex Ochoa has just been outstanding. His whole team's hustling and really doing a job. Johnson trying to bunt his way on. Foul tips it into the mid of Darren Fletcher. Lance Johnson has a line out to the pitcher a single to run scored. Puts this one in the air. Silvestri. Silvestri can't get it and he had to negotiate the mound down the left field line. That's a change in this ballpark from years ago with the bullpens along the lines. Absolutely the bullpens used to be behind the fences in a little shed out there but watch as Silvestri comes over that mound trips over it. Now he's got the wall to contend with. You got people with their hands raised. That's a terrible feeling when you're running somewhere in the old days they used to have mounds out in front of the dugouts and even catchers would fall over and it feels like somebody cut the legs out from under you. Spoken with experience. Mm. Johnson got another chance and gets on base with a single. His second hit. 
He's two for four, and on with one away for Jose Vizcaino. And that's happy birthday for Lance Johnson, 33 years old. Made the All-Star team for the first time, first he can't year be with the Vets. No, he can't be. I That's remember watching him play in Louisville with the Cardinals Triple-A ball club. I know, and I remember bringing him up to the White Sox 89, think he was a young kid. Still looks it. Still plays like it, too. Lance Johnson with 16 doubles, 12 triples to lead the major leagues. His career high in triples was 14 while well, with the White Sox. He's on first base now. He's always a threat to steal. John, they better keep him close because Lance likes to make things happen, especially when his team has the lead. Now he'll want to try to jump this in a hurry, and I guarantee the Mets know the time of Barry Manuel getting the ball to the plate. So let's see. I, I would venture to say Lance would go in a hurry. Back in, no tag put down by Rodriguez that time. Lance Johnson is third in stolen bases in the National League. Young of Colorado has 30, the Shields of the Dodgers 29, then Johnson. Johnson doesn't go. The strike, one strike on Vizcaino. Vizcaino sacrificed in the third inning, but that was with Johnson at second base after Lance advanced on an error. John, another thing people might not be uh, aware of, watch how the catcher, knowing there's a good base runner on, gets really ready in a hurry. And he gets turned a little bit, so he, as soon as he gets it, he's going to be ready to go. Now, here's Lance studying the pitcher. Now, Darren Fletcher, there's a throw to first, but Darren Fletcher, you can see him get ready. He's really up on his haunches, almost up on the toes of his feet, getting the signs from the dugout. He gets those from Felipe about throwing over, whether it'll be a pitch out, but he has got to be ready. Because when that ball comes to him and if Lance Johnson is motoring to second base, he's got to get that ball in a hurry and throw it to second. Johnson has the right foot out of the dirt area. Oh, oh, no. Closer play. And he didn't dive back like he did the pickoff move before. He's getting a little read on it, but Lance Johnson does something that a lot of other runners don't do. Look how he holds his hands. If you can see again, here's how close that play was. But Lance gets his hands across his body and he starts waving them. Here's Fletcher ready. A step off. Step off is to get a read. Really, it's just to get a read. Does it look like he's leaning? And the bench will keep a close eye on that base runner. But if you get a shot of Lance Johnson here in a minute, you'll Looks see. Looks like he's running track. He's like a track man. That's right. Only he's not facing toward the base. He's looking toward the pitcher. But the first move is to get the arms going. So Lance is trying to get a head start there. In left field, Cliff Floyd comes on and retires Vizcaino. Two outs in the Mets six. Now when we've had Lance when I was managing the White Sox there was a, a lot of our coaches didn't like what he did they said that's not the way to get started there's not any one way to play this game and it worked for Lance so we let him keep it I remember he got picked off a of second base one day when he was just a young rookie with me and he looked like he was very upset I said Lance I will be more angered with you if you don't continue to run don't let that stop you and he's been very aggressive ever since he draws the throw and is back in safely Chris Jones playing in place of Bernard Gilkey. Gilkey's bothered by a sore back, and the artificial turf doesn't help any sore back, sore knees, sore ankles, any of that. Gilkey had to leave the game last night. There's Fletcher getting ready. Popped up. No play for Rodriguez, no play for Fletcher. And one of the ways that you sit in the dugout and judge a base runner, especially a good base runner on artificial turf, is where his right foot is relative to the dirt and the artificial turf. The good base runners who get the good lead and you know they might go, get their right foot up on the artificial turf. And here's Felipe giving up to Fletcher. And Fletcher, you can know he's, he'd love to call a fastball here to try to throw him out. There's Lance moving up. Well, you bring up a good point, Jeff. He'd love to call a fastball. He's going to call the pitch it takes to get the hitter out now with two outs. But there are some catchers who will call the fastball regardless of the situation. Sure, they're trying to save their own pride factor. You want to be able to throw somebody out so you, the fastball is the easiest ball to throw. Johnson is back in standing again. You know, it's interesting. If we get some more shots watching Darren Fletcher, you can almost tell where the play is going to go because he gets more ready. He gets a more alert when the pitch is coming to the plate and not being thrown over. Let's see if we can see it ahead of time. Now he's getting ready. Looks like he's getting ready to go now. This is coming to the plate, I think. Up and in. And there was Fletcher ready to gun the second base in the event Johnson had been running. Now here's Felipe going through with him again. 
Fletcher intently watching. And the temptation, believe me, is to call a fastball on the outside part of the plate here. Johnson is going. A swing and a miss. And Johnson's going to third base. Stolen base number 28 and a throwing error charged to Darren Fletcher sets up the Mets with a scoring opportunity with two men out. Now that was a fastball we were talking about he wanted to get a fastball and he got the fastball but you know what happens a lot of times if we watch the replay here the fastballs up in the strike zone it stands him up a little bit and he doesn't quite stay down enough so when you don't stay down the ball will tail away from the second baseman. And Lance continues on to third base but boy does you think speed doesn't put pressure on that defense. Set up the whole play. And a strikeout. Chris Jones strikes out. And Barry Manuel works his first inning in relief of Kirk Reeder. The Mets are leading 5 2 in Montreal. Coming up in the bottom half of the sixth inning, they're trailing the Mets 5 2. And here's today's men in trivia question Who is the only National League player who, under the age of 20, hit a home run and also hit a home run after reaching the age of 40? We'll have the answer coming up in just a while. The only National League player to hit a home run under the age of 20 and also hit one after reaching the age of 40. Only one National League player has done it, one American League player. The American League player was Ty Cobb. So the only National League player. We'll get back to that in a while. The leadoff batter is Henry Rodriguez for Montreal. The Expos have had 22 comeback wins this season, 18 of those from the sixth inning on, so here we go. Breaking ball for a ball. Rodriguez has grounded out and struck out today. Henry Rodriguez on his way to the All-Star game Tuesday in Philadelphia. Two balls, no strikes, and a dangerous count to a power hitter. And Bobby Jones, John, as we said earlier, is the kind of guy that gives you innings, so out of his last 14 starts he's gone at least into the sixth inning 11 times. Boy does a manager appreciate that. And that's uh, one hopper to third Jeff Kent with a nice pickup. Rodriguez is out one down in the sixth. Let's go to Chip Carey in Hollywood to get an update Chip. OK guys thanks a lot boy that AL Central shootout has turned out to be a great ball game today. Davey Martinez at first in the top of the seventh inning Harold Baines line drive home run straight away center field his 14th of the year puts the White Sox in front two to one but the Indians are threatening at the Jake in the seventh. So in the American Lake Central the Cleveland Indians coming into Thursday's game had a four game lead over the White Sox. The White Sox have won the first two and here's a ball to Moises Alou. A two game lead right now with the White Sox leading in the seventh by a run. The Brewers are eight and a half out. Phil Gardner's team is at break even at 42 and 42. The Twins are two games under for Tom Kelly. Big swing and a miss by Moises Alou. Alou with a one and one count with nobody on base. John that's not going to be a runaway this year. I'll tell you that White Sox team that you broadcast every day is uh, is for real. Nice curve ball by Jones. One ball two strikes and that Cleveland Indian ball club as everybody found out last year in 144 games winning 100 mm. that team's for real too. And that's off the corner. Two balls and two strikes. Problem with the Indians right now is in their bullpen with their closer, Jose Mesa. Looks like he's lost his confidence, and, and that is such a tough role. They've also lost Franco, little Franco, to a pulled hamstring, and that's a big bat in the middle of that lineup. Swing and a miss for a strikeout. Alou is out on strikes for the first time today. Third strikeout for Bobby Jones, and he's trying to make it a 1 2 3 6, Jeff. And he looks like he's getting stronger. This is a high fastball. He just threw that ball right by Moises. That was perfect position. Every hitter has what we call a jam spot. Some you have to move it in farther, but he just threw that ball right by him at the letters. Fletcher on the first pitch. Rounds it off the second baseman, Vizcaino, and he's on. An error on the second baseman denies Jones that one two three inning he was trying to get the side in order for the first time today. So he'll have to face at least one more batter as F.P. Santangelo comes up with two guns. Well, that's a tough error I think that ball I haven't seen the replay but that 
that ball was hit hard. It looked like it took a hop up and hit uh, Vizcaino on his thumb. The Mets are last in the National League in fielding. And with this last error, that's number 82 on them. Strike one on Santangelo. And here's the play, Jeff. Yeah, the ball is hit hard, and he went over to get the ball, and at the last minute, it took a big hop. I don't know what that could have hit on that carpeting. That's a tough error when a ball changes direction like that when it's been hit so hard. Looks like it hit the 20-yard line. And the ball low to Santangelo. One ball, one strike. You know, it's interesting. You're talking about the Mets being last in fielding. They lead in errors, but except for the Ordonias having some problems lately, and Jeff Kent has been a good ball player. With that strike, the count one ball, two strikes on Frank Paul, left piece, and Tangelo. You think about Ordonez. Everybody's raving about the spectacular plays. Well, now he's starting to have some problems with uh, routine plays. Jeff Ken has uh, 18 errors at third base. He told us the other day, you can't believe these errors I'm making. He says they're, they're ridiculous, silly errors. I, I've just not been concentrating. That's outside. The count two balls, two strikes. But with this level, Tom McCraw was talking about this yesterday. Most of the talent, the level is up there at a very, very high range anyway. That what happens between the years makes the difference in winning or losing or succeeding or failing. Mm -hmm. Down the line, that's a fair ball going to the left field corner. Fletcher digs for third. And with Jones having trouble picking up the ball, a play at the plate, and he's saved. Fletcher scores all the way from first on the ball hit in the left field corner by F.P. Santangelo. John, I thought there was trouble there when that ball went inside third base, and Darren Fletcher looked like he was pleased to get to third base. He almost shut the motor down, and all of a sudden, Jerry Manuel was waving him on, and that's tough to get going again. Now, here's the line drive down the left field line. That's a nice piece of hitting by Santangelo, but if we get a shot of Fletcher coming into third base, he was shutting it down. And all of a sudden, Jerry Manuel, the third base coach for the Expos, waving him in, and he was he had to turn the gears up to get home, and a good throw would have had him at the plate. Here's the relay. Here's the throw, and the throw was off. But if that throw's on the money, Darren Fletcher's dead meat at the plate. It goes as a double and an RBI for Santangelo, his 32nd run batted in. Five to three game now as Floyd takes ball one outside. And here's the throw that really sailed up the first baseline. Well, you can really see what happened on that play. I mean, if that ball is anywhere near Todd Hundley, the Mets catcher, Darren Fletcher's in big trouble. And when you're three runs down, oh boy, would that have been a that have been a killer. They're going to go ahead and walk Floyd. Two balls and no strikes. Two more wide ones, and there will be runners at first and second. Well, that is an interesting call. That shows that Dallas Green doesn't go against the, I mean, goes against the book because they're walking the tying run. I mean, that's one of those things a lot of people are afraid to do. And bringing Dave Silvestri, the eighth place hitter, to the plate. But you can see what Dallas is doing. He's got a big left-handed power hitter. He's already got two pinch home runs this year, so you know he's got power. And now he's going to go against a right-handed hitter. So you have a right-handed Jones against a right-hander Silvestri, so you've got the chances of the strategy being in your favor because the balls will be able to be broken away from him. Jeff as a manager have you ever put the tiger the go ahead run on with a base on balls. A lot of times John and I'll tell you my heart would stop and it, it seemed like every time I did it they would walk the next hitter or they'd hit the next hitter and now the, the run I put on was in scoring position. But two out. And this all started with two outs and an error on second baseman Jose Vizcaino. A five to three game in favor of New York. This looked like a three up three down inning when the ball left Darren Fletcher's bat. A big bounce off Vizcaino's glove set up a scoring opportunity. So far the Expos have cashed in for a run. Silvestri is over two with a force play and a pop up. Bottom of the sixth inning. Told you a moment ago the Expos have 22 comeback wins, 18 from the sixth inning on. That's a ball high. Sylvester so telling himself, Jeff, keep that ball, make sure it's down. Make it be down. And the make reason hitters there. do that because if you go after a high fastball, it's very tough to get your bat on top of the ball. More often than not, on that high pitch, you'll either miss it or pop it up. So you got to say, get down in the zone where I can hit it. 
Silvestri with a 1 0 count. Two on, two out. That's a slider strike. One ball, one strike. Bob Gibson on a talk show one time was asked by a caller, why, why do they always swing at those pitches down there at the knees? You know, why, why do they always go for those? And, and Gibby told him they had eyes in their knees and might let them go by. <laughs> Those pitches look pretty good. When they have some movement to them, you never know. The ball up and in. Two well, balls, one strike. Wasn't it Bob Gibson that said when a catcher went out to talk to him one time, go on back behind the plate, because the only thing you know about, about pitching is that you can't hit it? And it wasn't me, John. Bird warms up the bullpen for the New York Mets down the left field line. Bobby Jones on the hill for the Mets. He's clinging to a two run lead. And it went too far. Silvestri has strike two, two balls and two strikes. Rodriguez grounded out, Aldo struck out. Then Fletcher reached on an air and scored on a double to the left field corner by Frank Paul Santangelo. Walk to Floyd set up first and second. Floyd gets a good lead with Husky playing behind the runner with two outs. And now time called at the plate by Sylvester. Now they're going to go on out. Talk things over. Over to the on deck circle goes Sylvester. Eighty six pitches for Bobby Jones. He has gone through five and two thirds innings and he has to shake off the fact he should be in the dugout as he tries to work on through Silvestri and perhaps ending the inning here. And this is a big pitch the two two pitch and the count that this is with two outs runners at first and second is the last pitch that he can really fool around with. He's he can really make his pitch here just miss off the corner and miss way in. So Jones will go to the dugout. That's his fourth strikeout. An error, a hit, a walk, two left, a run in. We've played six, and it's five to three in favor of New York. We'll return to Olympic Stadium after these messages from your local Fox station. Both picked up a run in the bottom of the sixth, and the Mets bat in the seventh now, leading 5-3. And Kent offers on the first pitch. Right side, foul territory. Henry Rodriguez back into fair ground to make the catch. One pitch, one out in the seventh inning. Todd Hundley will be coming up. The only National League player to accomplish that feat. The only American League player was Ty Cobb. Stop played with the Houston Colt 45s, 1963 at the age of 19. He was with the Mets, 84, 85, at the age of 40 and 41. He had home runs. Also played here in Montreal, 1969 to 71, and also 1979. Retired as number 10 in Montreal. Rusty stop. Todd Hunley is two at bats, official at bats today. A foul out, a strikeout. On base one time with a walk back in the third. A little tap, and that's foul. Fielded by Fletcher in foul territory. One ball and one strike. I think Hunley's a better hitter. I know his numbers indicated from the left side, but. Most guys that are switch hitters probably have the better numbers on the left side because they hit from that side more often. Face a lot more right handed pitching. Mm -hmm. Hundley has 18 of his 21 home runs from the left side. Three in a row retired by Barry Manuel on the relief of Reeder. A little bit low. Two balls, one strike. Five to three in favor of the New York Mets. They're trying to make it three in a row over the Montreal Expos, four in a row in the win column overall. Three balls, one strike on Hunley. Alex Ochoa hit a three run homer in the fifth inning. He's on deck. Full count. Three balls, two strikes. We're only trying to drive that pitch somewhere. Hunley's last 32 games give you an idea that he's been coming on strong and leading this ball club with his power potential. Nine home runs, 28 RBIs in his last 32 games. And a lot of that comes off of having had surgery last year in a wrist. First baseman Rodriguez under his glove and down the right field line. He expected a hop and didn't get it. Hunley into second standing. The 
David Segui, the regular first baseman, is out with an injured hand. Well, this ball was just one where he just looked away from it. As you see the ball off of Todd Hundley's bat. And it cost Rodriguez an error. It stayed down, and Henry just kind of pulled up off the ball instead of staying down on it. The fourth error for Montreal in the game. The Mets have Hundley in scoring position. One out, Alex Ochoa. Here's the young right fielder. One and oh as Manuel works away from the right handed hitter. Joe was a big prospect in the Baltimore Oriole organization. Traded for Bobby Bonilla. One ball one strike. He must have been looking for something in there Jeff. Well the ball he hit out of the ballpark was in and that ball was a breaking ball away. I think he was looking to turn on the ball. And you can do that early in the count before you get behind. Another breaking ball away, two balls and a strike on a chore. We talked before the game about how important it is to put together your team to be talented both defensively and offensively, and that's what this kid brings to the dance. He can do it all. Well, that's over the plate for a strike, two balls, two strikes. I have yet to see him really uncork a good throw. I mean, I haven't seen him play enough to really see the kind of throw that they say he can make. They say he's got the arm like. Uh, like Witten has, you know, that kind of real Sammy good Sosa. Sammy Sosa, Roberto Clemente used to have. That's pulled to third. Sylvester throws out Ochoa, holding Hundley at second base, two out. There's Hundley's due up, so we'll have a pinch batter, I'm certain. At the top of the order. One ball, no strikes on Husky. This is a big spot for the pitcher Barry Manuel right here because he's got to try to hold his club close. A lot of times you see the glamour positions are the closer and the starter, but the guys in the middle have got to keep their game, their team in the game. Oh, he didn't want to offer. Husky went too far. That was a good breaking ball by Manuel. Manuel ball appears to have a good slider. I'm sorry, John. It looks like he has a real good slider, and he's really been painting the outside corner. And there's the replay. You can see the bite on that. That not only went away from Husky, it went down as well. And when you get on top of a slider, a lot of times guys will work around a slider. A slider really, truly in name is a sliding fastball that you just pull down with a large finger on your pitching hand rather than both fingers equally. The index finger and the large finger. Isn't that a cut fastball? That's a cut fastball, and that's what a true slider really is. Now, a lot of guys will try to turn it and work around it, then it gets flat. That one right there went in and had two planes on it. It went away from Husky and down, and that is a nasty pitch. In the dirt, Husky has 12 runs batted in in his last 14 games. New baseball thrown out to Barry Manuel. There's Husky. Now, after all that description, sometimes guys will throw split fingers that have that same action. And unless you're up close and seeing the spin on the ball, you're never quite sure which pitch it is. on the corner a strike two and two with Hundley at second base and two outs in the seven the outfielders are playing Husky toward right field with Hundley taking his lead just out of your picture now and he set up outside and Fletcher was told Manuel hit the target with the breaking ball and Husky is out on strikes two strike out the check is leading off Batting for Barry Manuel, who worked two scoreless innings for the Expos. Offers on the first pitch by Jones and a foul ball. That's out of play off to the left. Hit a speaker in foul territory. When the ball hits a speaker here in foul ground, that's out of play. No play. Rob Lukacek is a nice story, John. We had him in the White Sox organization. You can see what he did in the minor leagues at Ottawa. He was released this year from the Tigers in spring training. He is really a lifer in this game. He's from uh, Jersey City, New Jersey. I've watched this kid grow. He comes to play. He would fit right in with this ball club, the kind of club that they have here. Pulled by the off-speed pitch. Look at check has an 0-2 count. He's bounced around the minor leagues, kind of like a career minor leaguer, but he really is an intensity to play the game. It's really nice to see kids like this get a chance. Does an offer on the breaking pitch. One ball and two strikes. 
Mark Rosalonic will be up next and then Mike Lansing. Way outside didn't break enough that time. Two balls and two strikes. Activity in both bullpens. Blicky is warming up for the Mets. And Dyer is throwing down the right field line. And that's tapped toward the pitcher. Jones plays that nicely. Just took his time, Jeff, and got the out at first base. Bobby's a good fielder, and he's under control all the time. He got off the mound and jumped on that ball. That ball was off the end of the bat, wasn't hit very well, but that's the one if it stays down and gets by him, Jeff Kent might not be able to make it. Mark Rosalani. He'll be the batter. Here's that ball off the end of the bat. A little like what Lance Johnson did in a different position, but Bobby took his time, got to it, stepped and threw. Made a strong throw. You see so many pitchers lobbing the ball now. The other day I saw a young pitcher toss one over the first baseman. I'd like to see a pitcher just go ahead and cut loose and make the throw over there and get the out. Big swing by Gruzelanik. Three out of three today for Mark. He's raised his average to 326. Foul on the third base side, so Grusalonic is down in the count quickly. No balls and two strikes. The Expos picked up a run in the sixth inning to cut it to two, but it is 5 3 in New York. Six hits in the last two ball games for Grusalonic. And that's into right center field, and there's a hit. A four for four game. I'll say it again, John. That's what the ball players say is a base hit bat. Anything that touches that bat's a base hit. And he's got that stroke, stroke going. This Monday, L.A. firefighters will race against time to save a family trapped inside a house engulfed in flames. If you've ever wondered what makes a hero, you're about to find out on the explosive season finale of L.A. firefighters. Comes your way Monday, 9 o'clock Eastern, on Fox. Rosalonic at first base and one out. Here's Lansing representing the tying run. And down the left field line. Chris Jones a right run and he'll have to play on the hop and cannot. Rosalonic will go to third. Lansing is at second. The tying run is now on second base with one down in the seventh inning. How big was that last out that Barry Manuel got? Holding the runner and not allowing him to score. Here you are. Now you've got the tying runs in scoring position. That's how the little things as the game goes along, those middle relievers are so important, holding the opposition down until your club has a chance to come back. Now watch the bounce on the ball. This is how different the game is on the artificial turf. It goes as a right. single and an error, Jeff. Well, he knows he can't get it. He's afraid it's going to bounce over his head, and the thing stayed down and hit him in the leg. You see, he jumped up, almost worried about it bouncing over his head. And of course, there's Gilkey, who's injured and not playing there today. Uh, we don't know whether he'd get to that or not. He had exceptional speed, and so he might have. Dallas Green is coming out to talk with Paul Nard, the home plate umpire. And it looks like a double switch. When the manager comes out to talk to the umpire, he's usually saying he's going to make a double switch. He will put another defensive player, and it looks like it's Tim Bogar possibly going over to first base, and he'll hit in the pitcher spot. Dave Malicki is the new pitcher. I'll tell you more about Dave and get back to play by play. Bottom of the seventh inning. Five to three New York, but the Expos are threatening. Over after six and a third innings, and he gives way with Gruzelanik at third, Lansing at second. Lansing represents the tying run. Dave Malicki is the new pitcher. Henry Rodriguez the bat. A foul ball on the tap to the left. In his last six games, Dave Malicki has won three and got his first major league save with three shutout innings in a 9 4 victory over the Reds that took place at Chase Stadium on June 21st. Oh, Henry the bat. Now they've kept the ball away from him all day long. They've changed speed and kept the ball away. Let's see if they continue to do that. And the shot you saw of Bobby Jones in the dugout, those last two balls that have runners at second and third were good pitches and not hit very well. Breaking ball over for a strike to Rodriguez. So you can imagine a starter's frustration. He feels like he made the pitches he wanted to make, 
and all of a sudden he looks up there's runners at second and third and there's Bobby's frustration he just said I know I made the pitch little bloop shots pitcher needs a few more Adam balls yeah does, does he ever Tim Bogar is at first base he'll be batting in the pitcher spot and will bat lead off and the Mets come up in the eighth nice stop by Hundley there's a run save. Well, I'll tell you what, that's what this kid could do. When he first came up, he caught David Cohn, and David Cohn has that nasty fork ball in the yes. dirt. This kid could catch the ball with anybody, and the ball's in the dirt. Watch this one. This saved the run. Boom. And the one that's out front so far, look how he kept his head down, kept his body in front of it. That's the toughest one that's way out in front of the plate because it might bounce over your shoulder. David Cohn, now a member of the Yankees. Mets bullpen has been brilliant as of late. How brilliant. Let's take a look at the numbers. They're the 17th of June, the 6 and 10 record. Since then, 5 and 0 oh with an ERA under 1. And holding the opponents to just over a 200 batting him. Well, when they start stopping them out of the bullpen, you got a chance to win. They lost a lot of games early when on blown leads in the middle of their bullpen. If you can get through the middle and get to John Franco, you got a chance. And this is an opportunity to let the get the game get away right here, second and third, one out. Reaching for it, Rodriguez fouls it off on the right side. One ball, two strikes. You know, the minute you say it, something will happen. All of a sudden, there'll be an explosion. But they have really controlled the strike zone on Henry Rodriguez today. He has been reaching and off, not on any pitch. He hasn't really gotten a good rip. They're probably showing him everything but fastballs. Uh, up from the middle end, they want to keep the ball away. And the dead for a strikeout. Rodriguez strikes out for the second time today. So the Mets have been able to get big pitches in big moments. A double play ball by Mike Lansing in the fifth, the strikeout of Silvestri in the sixth. And here Malecki comes out of the bullpen to get Henry Rodriguez. Right where they wanted it, outside and up at the letters, and they just threw a riser right by him. Last night the Expos stranded 15 on base a season high. They have two on now they've stranded five through six innings this afternoon. There's at third Lansing at second base. Alou the batter. And another nice stop by Hundley keeping the ball near home plate. Alou in the first inning crashed his 12th home run of the year. A long blast to left field. Reached on a force play in the third, struck out in the sixth. The other thing, and I keep harping on about catchers, the other thing that Todd Huntley allows his pitcher to do is to throw the ball in the dirt with a runner at third. They feel confident that he can catch anything. On the appeal. John, I've seen no it. Strikes. Excuse me. I've seen it so many times in the past where a pitcher is not sure what to throw in a situation with a runner at third base because he's a little afraid his catcher can't handle mm -hmm. him, and he leaves the ball right in the middle of the plate, and that's when he gets hurt. These Met pitchers know that Hundley will catch the ball. Fastball hit foul on the, down the right field line, and just onto the railing. He had no play. Got over to the wall, hoping to have a shot at that one. When a pitcher sees that go up, his heart has to start beating, thinking, I have a chance here for the out. And it just went into the crowd. Well, I'll tell you, it was pulling as hard as anyone is that Bobby Jones sitting there seeing a win. If they can get out of this, look at Bobby. He's a cool customer, but he's wringing his hands, I'm sure, at this point, just thinking, oh, look at him. Oh, get this one. We need it right now. Alou has at least another swing here. Two and one. The runners in scoring position. He is at 319. Boys is Alou. To the shortstop. Alfonso. Retiring Alou. Leaving runners at second and third. So the Met bullpen comes through again. And Bobby Jones has a chance at a victory today. We go to the eighth inning. The New York Mets are leading the Montreal Expos five to three from Olympic Stadium in Montreal. Thinning the New York Mets are coming up here in Montreal leading the Expos five to three. A new pitcher for Montreal and his right hander Mike Dyer. Dyer takes over for Barry Manuel who worked two scoreless innings. Four and two record with a three point eight ERA. Thirty ninth game and two saves for the right hander. The ball low to Alfonso. Leading off, I misspoke. 
when I said that Tim Bogart was going to be leading off Alfonso then Bogart batting in the number nine spot and Lance Johnson. Out of play to the right side. One ball and one strike. Edgardo Alfonso is one for three. He singled and was left at second base in the fourth inning. That scored their runs with two in the third and three in the fifth inning. The three coming on a home run by Alex Ochoa. Fastball. Looks like Mike Dyer can bring it, Jeff. You remember the first time you saw him, John? He pitched as a starter back in 89 against our White Sox team when he was with uh, Minnesota. I had I remembered the name, but I didn't realize it was the same guy. Big swing and a miss. Two balls and two strikes. And he does throw hard. And you know, when you look at these uh, stats, look at the Montreal Expo stats and look at the appearances for their bullpenners. This is his 39th game or before the All-Star game. How many really hard throwing starters do we have in baseball anymore? You're right. I think there are more hard throwers in the bullpen than there are in starting rotations. In the right field, and this is going to get down for a hit on a 2 2 pitch. Edgardo Alfonso leads off the eighth inning with a single in front of Moises Alou. It does set up a good contrast, Jeff, to come from a pitcher who varies the speeds and breaking balls and whatnot, then to see a hard thrower for a setup or a closer. Well, sometimes it happens too because your starting pitcher who throws so hard runs out of gas or doesn't locate or doesn't have another pitch to go with it. And that straightens out in the big league hitters right. time the fastball. So in the bullpen you can go to him for a couple hitters or a couple innings and just let him fire. Here's Bogart batting for the first time today. Safe at first base Alfonso has one steal without being caught. This game has really changed. It used to be that relievers were the guys that couldn't start. They were. It was a demotion. Yes, but not anymore. You set roles in the bullpen. You don't see many complete games like you used to. With the bunt in the air and back to the screen. Tim Bogar is a utility infielder. I had. When I managed the Mets, he came up through the system. He's one of those guys you like on a ball that can play anywhere for you. Can play third base, shortstop, second base. And he's had a couple pretty good years with a bat. I can remember the one time he was the last guy that got into a game for us in '93. We finally got him in there about two months sitting on the bench after spring training, and I think he struck out. He, I mean, you know, he was only joking. He's thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't blame him. <laughs> Why didn't you get him in there sooner? <laughs> yeah. Here's a move to first. And Alfonso is safe again. Rodriguez holds. Mike Dyer's the third pitcher used today, with Kirk Ruder on the hook for a loss right now with the score at 5 3 New York. Ruder went five innings. There's a look at the, from the side at Mike Dyer. The bunt is foul. And the ball, but couldn't put it into fair play. And had that been a fair ball, may have been a play at second base. You used to like those to catch her, didn't you? When that ball rolls two or three feet out in front of the plate. Oh yeah, then you could jump on it and show your arm off a little bit. I didn't like playing on this stuff though, trying to pick up bunts. This is like trying to pick up a ping pong ball on a ping pong table. You know, if you mm -hmm. don't stay on it and look right at it and scoop it back with your glove hand, all of a sudden it squirts out of your hand. No, oh, we saw a little bit of an example of that at first base on a ball that got under Henry Rodriguez's glove. No bounce to it at all. Just had enough spin to hug the carpet. Outside and low. One ball and two strikes on Tim Bogar with Lance Johnson waiting to bat next for New York. I think you're right. You know, you brought up a very good point about a lot of clubs are going for their hardest throwing people and putting them in the bullpen. We talked about guys that didn't make all star teams. Mariano Rivera with the Yankees. I mean, possibly could have been an all star with what he's done, but there's a hard throwing kid they use as a long reliever. There's a smash to the middle of base hit for Bogar on a one two pitch. Now Dyer has managed to work ahead of both Alfonso and Bogart and lost them both to hits. Well, he shattered that bat. That hit right on his hands and got through the middle. Here's the replay. Oh, that ball was chasing him and broke that bat. You can hear that splitting up here. We're having a pitching change. Ball is a new pitcher. On the face, left handed batting Lance Johnson. One and two is record for Dahl, 3.12 ERA. Johnson lays off the curve. 
Dahl has inherited 38 runners this season with only nine scoring. Well, those are nice numbers. And Omar Dahl, of course, came out of the Dodger organization and is very tough on left handed hitters. And now he's behind Lance. We'll see how he pitches to Lance Johnson. Curveball hit to the first baseman. Goes to the shortstop. And Brizzolonic takes it in for the force play. But Alfonso moving to third. Bogar is out. Play goes 3 6. And Lance Johnson will create a little havoc over first base with his speed. Here's the play again from a different angle. Nice play by Henry Rodriguez. Only one place to go to second base, but he makes a nice throw. That is not an easy play because you're throwing from behind the runner. But now they're going to have to defend, and I speak about the Expos, they're going to have to defend against the possible steal or even double steal here. Because Lance Johnson can make things happen at first base. He has a steal today. It gives him 28. Jose Vizcaino, 0 for 3 with a sacrifice. Slide to left field in the sixth inning. Dancing down the line at third base, Alfonso. For the first, drives Johnson back in. That fly ball from the sixth inning will get a run in here for the Mets. If Vizcaino can get lift again to left field or anywhere to the outfield deep enough to bring in Alfonso. Five to three Mets right now. That's a ball, a check swing by Vizcaino. There's another ball in the dirt with a runner at third base. They really should keep a stat, an official stat of runs saved by the catcher. That's an old catcher talking, but I really think it's an important part of the game. Carlton Fisk did. Mm -hmm. He kept that uh, little notebook back in the locker. You know, it gives you a lot of good feeling to know you've helped your ball club, and a lot of times people don't understand how important it is. Certainly the pitching staff does. Again, a check swing on an inside pitch. Two balls, no strikes. Vizcaino is trying to pick up Alfonso from third base. And Dahl's attention is certainly divided with Lance Johnson, the runner at first. Henry Rodriguez holding at first base for the Expos. And Vizcaino is the type of hitter you like to have up in this situation. He puts the ball in play. He can handle the bat well. He might not pull off the ball and hit it into double play. I mean, it could happen, but I mean, he handles the bat well. Difference in the game today, Jeff. That's the way Bobby Jones got a double play ball in the fifth and a strikeout in the sixth inning, leaving runners at first and second base after one run had scored thanks to an error. The Expos have committed four errors today. Throw to first base. Johnson is reading that move. He's having no problem with it. You know, when you look at a ball game, you step back and you say, how did this game go? You know pitching sets the tone. Bobby Jones made the pitches when he needed to. Kirk Reeder did not. He just could not make the pitch when he needed it most with runners in scoring position. Another throw to first base. Johnson back in. Really no contest. He's reading Omar, Do Omar Dahl's move quite well. There used to be a trick play out of this move. If you saw enough throws to first base, the runner at third base just flat out broke if he ever saw the pitcher lift his leg and go to first base. That was an old Billy Martin trick. Outside. Three balls and no strikes on Vizcaino with Jones, Kent, Hunley, the middle of the order coming up. I remember a story one time I was a pitching coach for the Yankees and I told Rudy May, don't hang your leg, don't try to pick Ricky Henderson off from first base if there is a runner at third because they'll score. Sure enough, they scored. Foul ball on three and zero. Oh. Vizcaino was swinging on three and zero. Oh. Well, you said everybody in everybody baseball is swinging three and zero. Oh. You know what you do as a manager when you decide to let a man swing three and zero. Oh. Used to be only the home run hitters. If you have a hitter who you have confidence in as being selective, who will not swing at a bad ball, you'll take a shot at it with him. Seems to be everybody these days. Mm -hmm. But that Rudy May thing, we had said, now watch it. Billy Martin likes this. He was managing Oakland. Rudy May was a left handed pitcher for the Yankees. He said, now don't mess around throwing over to first base here because it's a trick play. And sure enough, he walked home. Swing and a fly down the right field line. Here's Alou. And no chance for Alfonso to come down because the ball was not hit deep enough for a sacrifice fly. Two outs in the eighth inning for Chris Jones. That was a nice play by Moises Alou. That ball was in almost an area that you worry about of being a black hole where you can't get and defend the area 
and he came a long way for the ball and he was trying to get in position in case the runner were tagging up trying to make an attempt to go to the plate. Here's Jones now he has two hits and a run scored today struck out in the sixth. And a move to first Johnson's only two steps away. So Dahl is keeping Johnson close to the bag but we'll see now what the Mets have in mind with two outs. And for another time today the Mets did not pick up a man from third base that's three times they failed to score. With less than two outs and a man at third. Ball inside one ball and no strikes only to have somebody come up and pick up like Chris Jones. He popped out with a man at third in the third inning. Jeff Kent got a single to drive in a run. Hundley struck out with runners at first and third in the fifth. Ochoa hit a home run after that with two down. Big swing, no contact for Chris Jones. Jones struck out swinging in the sixth. Well, here's the situation runners at first and third and two outs. Probably not the count they might want to run on, but if it gets to two strikes, you might see Lance Johnson pull up a, a trick here and try to get out. Even right in the left hander's face and Alfonso the runner at third base might head for the plate. Lance is safe at first base. Johnson got on on a force play. Alfonso and Bogart got singles. Johnson hit into a force out. Bogart retired at second and Alfonso taking third. This guy you know, hit a fly ball too short to right field to score the run. Now one and one on Jones. And that's it. Baby. A run score. Alfonso crosses Johnson takes third and safe at second base is Chris Jones. The Mets have added to their lead they're ahead by three now six to three with runners at second and third and two down and Jones picked up Vizcaino. Three times the Mets failed to score with a fan at third and less than two, uh, two down and they get a little help from their teammates. Well here's the shot it's almost down the line balls hit hard. Nice diving attempt by Silvestri. Cannot come up with the ball. Now, when the throw goes in from Clifford Floyd into second base, Mike Lansing is not at the base, so he doesn't have a chance of getting Chris Jones. That's good aggressive base running. That's heads up. Here goes Jones heading for second. He he was thinking right out of the box that he's going to try to go to second base. They're, they're thinking very aggressively. That's out of play down the right field line. And Jeff Kent's starting to swing the bat too. Jeff is a is a down fastball hitter, and there are times where he'll chase bad breaking stuff in the dirt and just look horrible. But all of a sudden, he'll hit a stretch where he'll hit anything that they throw down in the zone, as long as he stays selective away from the balls in the dirt of the balls up around his letters. Chris Jones has had a tough time in left field today, but not at the plate. He has three hits, playing in place of Bernard Gilkey. I call 0 and 2 on Jeff Kent. Jones has two singles, a double, a run scored, and a run batted in. There's Kent. Two for four today for Kent. RBI and a run scored for him. Six to three, New York. The Mets trying to get more with two outs in the eighth. The red dots indicate runners at second and third. Chris Jones at second, Lance Johnson on third base. Outfielders are playing Kent to pull. Dahl has really slowed the pace of this game since coming out of the bullpen. You know it's a good sign for the Mets too. Not the fact that just the fact that they came from behind last night. They were able to put two bench players in here today and get five hits out of them. Chris Jones has three. Alfonso has two. Foul ball for Kent. That was a thud off the left foot. 0-2 on Kent. He'll have to walk off the sting of that one. There's Bernard Gilkey. Bernard fell a twinge in his back last night playing on this turf and is not in there today. And of course, he has been a major factor in the success of this Mets club this year. Gilkey and Johnson came up through the Cardinal system together. They did. Young players there, and they're so happy to be back together. And then here comes Chris Jones. He comes off the bench, gets three big hits. Uh, that's a sign of a club kind of coming together. It's not just luck. It's it's when, as a manager, you try to use your bench if you can. Now you see Jeff Kent walking this off. This really hurts. People have no idea. You foul a ball off the top of your foot. It hits down in your shoelaces. Oh, that looked like it was up around the ankle. That hit him in the ankle. And there's no meat there. That's all bone. That is an awful feeling. You see how far out in front Kent was with his swing. 
just went off the end of the bat and then off the ball. A lot of guys will wear those little shin guards there to keep from doing that. But Lance Johnson wears a big shin guard, almost like a catcher's shin guard. And some players are expanding the size of that protection when they come up to the plate, trying to keep that particular thing from happening. That John Franco making fun of him. <laughs> But two on. A ball and one ball, two strike count on Kent. See, Franco never has to be up there long enough. He's the closer, usually yep. in to get three outs. That's it. He doesn't have to worry about fouling those pitches off his shin or off a of foot. Well, John has fun in the dugout. He has fun with this game. And when it's his time to be in the game, he's all business. Kent is out on strikes. Well, the Mets picked up a run. They had three hits and left two men on. Steps up. He has been on base with an error, a single. The Expos are down by three. One strike to count as Malecki came in to get out of a heck of a spot. Second and third, one out in the seventh. He struck out Henry Rodriguez and got out low to ground out. One ball and one strike on Fletcher. Well, you see it in ball games, Jeff, and from the Montreal standpoint, that run the Mets put up in the eighth inning, that can be a killer. Mm -hmm. Makes it a three run game now. That's fair. And that's Bogart first base, three unassisted. Fletcher is out number one. You're right, John. Just one. Get into the batter's box. One ball and no strikes. You can see a difference in the way Dahl came in. He was working slowly because he had Lance Johnson on base for one reason. But here's Malicki out of the bullpen. He can't wait to throw the next one. He has developed a pace and really is carrying on the pace established by Bobby Jones. To the third baseman. Alfonso throws out Santangelo. Two ground ball outs for Dave Malicki. Cliff Floyd is the hitter. Ball one as that rolls away from Todd Hundley. When things are going well for a ball club, you see the players coming out to the clubhouse early. Or say a seven o'clock ball game, they're out there at 1 2 o'clock. They're not out there just to play cards. Some of them are out there to get some extra hitting in or just to be around the clubhouse and get ready to go to work. Two balls and no strikes. And they can't wait to get to the ballpark at that point. I agree with you. And watching the Mets today, you know, you try when you sit in, the, in one dug you dugout, you look at the other and you try to read individual players' body language or full team body language. It appears that the Mets are having fun. That dugout's having fun. Now that's Greg Pavlik you're looking at right there. Very good pitching coach. A drive to the gap in right center field. As this one goes to the wall, Cliff Floyd takes the turn for second. He has clear sailing to a double. Oh, did he drill this one, Jeff? Sure did. His first at bat, he just missed one. He hit a line drive, if you remember, that Lance Johnson went back on. He got on top of this line drive and hit it up that alley. Watch him come down on this. He has kind of a flat bat and he comes right down. Wacko into that ball. Look at that shot. That's a third line drive. He's hit today. The one you talked about with Lance Johnson. He lined into a double play in the fourth inning with Darren Fletcher on first base. Had that ball gone shooting down the right field line, it would have been a run then. One ball, no strikes on Dave Silvestri. We haven't mentioned why. Dave Silvestri has been playing the last couple of days. Shane Andrews had to go home for a death in his family and Shane has been doing a good job for the Expos at third base uh, 11 home runs and contributing a great deal and he had to leave under circumstances of personally. Big swing couldn't hold up Silvestri went too far one ball one strike Andrews is supposed to be back sometime today. Chris Shane was their number one pick. I remember in 1990, I was managing the White Sox, and Art, we had to make a decision between Shane Andrews and Alex Fernandez. Certainly worked out well for the White Sox, and Shane Andrews is now just getting his feet on the ground at the major league level. Of course, he was a high school kid, and, and Alex was out of college. Ball two, two balls and a strike. And actually, Fernandez left the University of Miami. To go to Dade South Community College to be eligible for the draft. So he left Miami after his freshman year. And Alex Fernandez also was in the big leagues by August of 1990. Fetched his first game in Milwaukee. Sure Frank Thomas played in that game. That's high. 
now three and one count. With two down. Floyd is doubled. Silvestri is trying to extend the inning. The pitcher spot is due up next. And Sherman Obando is in the on deck circle. You know it's neat to see. It's not life or death for Felipe. It's a ball game. He wants to win it. And there's a walk. Obando is going to be the hitter with two outs. But you can look in the dugout. He's kind of got a smile on his face. Felipe, look at him. He was poking Jim Tracy, one of the coaches. You know, he takes the game seriously. He wants to win, but he keeps it in perspective. And this might be why. He's used to coming from behind. He's saying, well, here we come. We got him right where we want him. We're down three runs. 22 times coming from behind. 18 times in the sixth inning on. That's a sign of a lot of character with a ball club. And Sherman Obando is the pinch batter. Batting for the plate with this guy because he can juice the ball. So Bando has Floyd at second base, Silvestri at first. And a foul ball to the screen with Floyd breaking for third base with two outs. Well, I'll tell you what, we talked about Felipe being aggressive. I don't know if that was a sign that was missed or just an aggressiveness by a young, very aggressive big base runner who can run. I mean, you're talking about a six foot four guy. Let's see. Felipe's looking as he's saying, was he supposed to go? Let's look at his face, see if you get a read here. But he wants to be aggressive. And I guarantee you the way they've come from behind is being aggressive. Run the bases aggressively, make things happen. But don't make that third out of third base. Oh, you better not. Thank you. Big lead at first for Silvestri. One strike at Obando had a big rip at the first pitch. One ball and one strike. A pinch batter Sherman Obando. It's all got started with a two out double to the gap in right center by Floyd. John and we've said so many times when a ball club starts to believe that it can come from behind that it's never down too far. Not, nothing no run is no what lead is safe I should say. Broken back ground ball to second. This guy you know, throws out Obando. And that puts down the uprising. Floyd doubled, Sylvester walked to left, nine stranded today for the Expos. We go to the ninth with the Mets leading. You think the pitcher's mound is a danger zone for a batted ball? Watch this. Oh, look out. He was watching the ball on a roll to second base. And Maliki almost got nailed with the barrel of the bat. He had never seen that bat. Do you remember the time that um, the bat broke off in San Diego? And with, it was Jaeger. It was in, stuck in Steve Jaeger's neck. Mm -hmm. I mean, that could have uh, could have killed him. That's when Jaeger started using that uh, throat guard. Bill the Bueller, guard. the trainer, designed that. Yes. The throat guard on the catcher's mask. Unley leads Jaeger. off, and the Met catcher takes a strike. The Mets are trying to beef up their six to three lead. The Expos who play comeback baseball this year will have the top of the batting order coming up in the bottom of the night. A foul ball out of play off the bat of Todd Hundley facing Mel Rojas on to work the ninth inning. Rojas doesn't like that baseball so he'll get a new one. Rojas picks up for Omar Dahl who worked the three outs in the eighth. You don't see a lot of closers used in a situation like this unless they haven't worked too much or unless you're just saying hey we know we come from behind let's hold them right here you bring your closer in in a game like this. One ball and two strikes on Hundley in the last couple of nights Rojas hasn't had a chance to come in to close a ball game but the Mets winning four nothing and nine six. Hundley is 0 for three on with the base on balls and that was back in the third. I oh, jumped on it. Deep right field. And gone a home run. Todd Hundley hits his 22nd home run of the year. And that's a danger of bringing a closer in in a game that is not tied or in a game where Rojas doesn't have a save opportunity. You're right. You see it all the time. The adrenaline isn't flowing the same way, but. By the same token you got to give Todd Henley a lot of credit. We talked earlier in the game about his being a, a better left handed hitter and how strong he is. That was a fastball up around the letters and he didn't mess around. He jumped on that thing and drove it out of here. Watch this. Bang he gets on top of that and out it goes. Boy is that a pretty stroke. Now it's going to take a grand slam to tie the game for Montreal but still nobody out in the ninth. There's a choice. Well Joe hit a home run a three run blast in the fifth inning going one for four. Suddenly gets the high fives from everybody. 
in the Mets dugout. There's a strike. One ball, one strike. The home run by Hundley's is 22nd, the second most among catchers, as Piazza has 23 to lead National League backstops. Off the plate toward the shortstop. Zelani just throws out Ochoa. Oh, that was close. Well, the New York Mets are 40 and 45. Does Dallas Green still think this young team has a chance of going to postseason play? A lot of times clubs give up, uh, but a young club I found they they continue to work, and we've had a good work ethic. We've got a good program, I think, to 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 prepare the guys for to do what they're supposed to do. Now it's up to them to realize that they can get in the middle of this thing if they get to their 500, and we're close enough now, I think, where we can grab that and keep running. And off and running they are today, seven to three lead. Andy Tamberlin is batting for the pitcher. Ball one to the left-handed hitter. Tomlin played for the Oakland A's, also the Boston Red Sox. And that's a base hit to right field for Tomlin. Two hard hit baseballs off Rojas in the ninth, one for a homer by Hunley, and this single to right field. Well, John, that's another subject to talk about for a long time. When you talk about putting a closer in, when he's not in his normal role and they just don't seem to have the same drive they don't come at it the same way I can remember one time when I was managing the Cleveland Indians I put our ace closer Jim Kern in the ball game just to get a little work of course it was his idea he said I'd like a little work about seven runs later he said don't he ever listen over, to me huh? again yes and the great ones I've been around Goose Gossage they don't like to pitch in games like this Alfonso takes a strike at the conclusion of our game today Jeff and I will select the genuine Chevrolet player of the game. Ochoa grounded out and then Tomberlin got a pinch hit single. Two hit day for Alfonso. He went too far with the swing. And Paul Nart, the one plate umpire, rings up strike two. Beginning play today, the New York Mets, 40 and 45, 12 games behind Atlanta, eight games behind second place Montreal. Way inside one ball two strikes. Well as we talked to Dallas he also mentioned about last year how well they played the second half of the season they played 12 or 14. He really is encouraged final. about what can happen after the all star break with this team. He really is. He's excited about it. you can see it you can see the fun they're having in the dugout and with that home run of Huntley's John Franco sat down because it's no longer a safe situation and Paul Bird has gotten up. Line to right center field. That's going to be trouble for the Expos. On to third, Tomberlin. A long single for Alfonso. That's his third hit. The 17th hit today by the Mets. First and base hit. Bogart with runners at the corners and one out. Fourth time today the Mets have had a runner at third, less than two outs. Foul ball by Bogart. Oh! Single in the eighth inning. Well, that was a great play by the ball girl. You know, she made up for the other four errors, I guess, that the Expos have made today. But nice play. Fifteen thousand five hundred forty-six. The attendance in Montreal. Saturday afternoon baseball. The Expos and the Mets were in the ninth. Jammed him and a foul ball over by the stands. No play for Darren Fletcher. No, John, I'm sitting here as a hitting coach with the Mets. 17 hits today, a season high. Pretty hard to argue that statement for this ball game for sure. Oh, a hit. Bogar is hit by the pitch and the bases are loaded with one out. Top of the order and Lance Johnson coming up and. The whole key. Rojas working out of the stretch with the bases full. One strike on Lance Johnson as Rojas took a little something off that one. Johnson was up there, first ball, fastball hitting. Two for five today for the Mets leadoff batter. 
You know, I look at Lance Johnson and realize how far he's come. When he first came up to our ball club with the White Sox in 89 when I was managing there, he had a bat that was vertical. He uppercut a lot of pitches. Look how flat his bat is now. Now he hits line drives. That's good down the right field line and perhaps toward triple territory. One scores, two scores. Here comes a third, and Lance Johnson has just tripled his 13th and leading the major leagues. Tom Berlin, Alfonso, and Bogart score on the three base hit by Johnson, and the Mets have cracked open the game 10 to 3. Jeff Torborg, anytime I see that baseball going toward the right field line with Lance, you know what's going to happen. Absolutely. We were just talking about it being a flat bat. He sure enough, he drove it down the right field line. Here goes the ball into the corner. And Moises tries to get over and get that ball, and it kind of hits, skids past him. But I think Lance was going to, he had it in his mind, he's going to third anyway. One ball and no strikes on Jose Vizcaino. Well, that's one of the things we had to really implant in, in Lance is that hit the line driver ground ball line driver down that's your game. He has 40 runs batted in. Yeah. And there's a hit to left field plating Lance Eight. Johnson 11 to 3 Mets. As the Mets have added to their season high and hits at 19. RBI number 24 for Vizcaino. And here's the eighth man to bat in the ninth inning against Bill Rojas. It's Chris Jones. And yes, that dugout's alive on the third base side here in Montreal. Sending many of the fans home here. One and oh. Hello. And still one out. Could that be a cry for help? What was that? <laughs> and maybe a cry for the dugout. Check to see Joe Kerrigan. Is that Joe down there? Tim Scott will get busy. He took the loss here last night. Scott will begin warming down the right. Montreal's infield, a double play depth. Two strikes, one and two. Use their bullpen a lot here. It's just one of those things that can't seem to get an out or a second out. The only out is Ochoa's ground out to short. That's in the dirt. Fletcher will keep Jose Vizcaino. It wasn't the American League. In the dirt and on to second base goes Vizcaino. You know who the last American leaguer was to go over 20? Who was it? Willie Wilson. That's a lot of triples. How about Willie Mays? And that's a lot of artificial turf for Willie Wilson. Yes. Same Will thing with Lance Johnson on the turf. Yes. He gets that ball down, he's off to the races. How about Willie Mays? I mean, one of the greatest home run hitters of all time to have that number of triples. 1957. Mays had 20. Out of a half swing, third baseman Sylvester throws out Jones. This guy, you know, goes on to third base with two outs. Donez. Or did he make some play from his knees opening day against the Cardinals? Drag one. Huh? He woke up the world to his talents for certain just with his play opening day, a throw from the left field line to get it out of the plate. He has a lot of errors, but he might be the one of the best I've ever seen going to the outfield for pop-ups. Oh and two on Ordonez. But the play you're right now as a youngster, you know, uh, big licking it just a little bit. It's that past the mound. Throws him out. Nine men came to bat in the Mets' ninth inning. Five score. We go to the bottom. 19 hit attack today. Paul Bird is the new pitcher. Malicki well, is out of the game, lifted for a pinch hitter and a big swing by Gruzelanik. Four hit game today for Gruzelanik and one strike here in the ninth. A ball, one ball and one strike. Malicki, 540 ERA. This is his tenth game. On the right field line and toward the stands. And a catch made by Ochoa. Next to the sidewall, Ochoa with the catch and one out. He has a three run homer today. Lansing takes a strike, so one down in the ninth. Two outs to go for Montreal. That's on the ground. 
to third. Alfonso with time. Throws out Lansing, and now the Expos are down to their last out. Henry Rodriguez is 0 for 4. And this could be the last out. Oh, it goes foul. Bird couldn't quite get there in time. So Rodriguez and the Expos still have life. Well, the Expos have lost three in a row. The Mets have won three in a row. They took Thursday's ball game. They won four nothing. Last night, the Mets came back to win nine to six. They're having some fun over the Mets dugout. <laughs> Doing a little jig over there. Well, that five run ninth inning can loosen up a crowd, can it? Yeah, that's Mark Clark on the left. All the way back to the screen it goes. One ball and one strike. How about Clark coming over from Cleveland? Do you think the Indians fans and the Indian ball club would like to have him back in the pitching rotation? Oh, you're not kidding. Clark and that's Isringhausen next to him, the kid Phenom that uh, has struggled a little this year after getting off to a great start last year. It's like he's tough to keep caged up there, though. And now the Expos are down to their last strike. Henry Rodriguez, we're in the 0 for today. 0 for 4 with two strikeouts and two ground outs. And this ball game has come to an end as Paul Bird strikes out Henry Rodriguez, working a three up, three down ninth inning. One inning and one strikeout for Bird. Dave Malicki, very nice job on, on him relief for Bobby Jones, who gets the win today. Malicki worked an inning and two thirds with a strikeout. One hit and one base on balls. Our final score here today from Montreal, the New York Mets 11, the Montreal Expos 3. It all got started, our scoring in the first inning today with the Montreal Expos and Moises Alou with two outs going deep off starter Bobby Jones. That was the 12th home run of the year for Alou. But in the fifth inning, a Joel went yard, a three run blast to make it a five to two ball game. For a his third home run, and he has been up two weeks. And this was big with Rodriguez batting in the seventh inning. Out on strikes. And that left runners in second and third. And in the ninth, Lance Johnson with a bases full goes down the right field line for a major league leading 13th triple. And Lance Johnson is today's genuine Chevrolet player of the game. And Lance is standing by down on the third base side. It's his 33rd birthday. What a game today, Lance. John Rooney along with Jeff Torbor. Hey, John. Hey, Jeff. Jeff, how you guys doing? All right, number one, how are you? Boy, that was a beautiful happy birthday today, wasn't it? Oh, yes, it was. Uh, and uh, it's nice to say that I could take this to Philadelphia and celebrate. <laughs> how about that? Making it to Philadelphia as an all-star in your new league. Well, uh, it took me a long time, eight years uh, uh, quietly hitting the ball hard, I guess, Jeff. Uh, I don't know what to say. I'm just ecstatic about it, and I'm glad Bobby uh, had enough confidence in me to select me. Thanks, Bobby. Lance, that's very nice. I'll tell you, you deserve it. You've played very well for a lot of years, and of course, uh, you made me very happy managing in the dugout, watching you play so quietly and so efficiently, and now you're you're being honored and you deserve it. But what's this about all these triples? Uh, you told me a long time ago that that was your baby and you had a hold of that. We were talking about the flat bat, hitting the line, drives, getting the ball on the ground. You're still doing it. Well, uh, that last one, the ball kind of got in on me, and uh, when you're swinging that big 37 ounce, you know you could get it through the infield, so uh, that helps, Jeff. How many years ago did you go to that size of bat, Lance? Uh, it's, always... been, it's been about three years. Mm -hmm. Three years, but I've always swung 34, 34, and then I switched to a 35, 33, and uh, I've been getting stronger over the years, and, and those 33-ounce uh, bats got lighter, and, you know, I'm just getting stronger, so I go 36 to 40, depending on how I feel. Lance, 1989, we sent you out of spring training, and you and I sat for about 45 minutes. You said, Skip, you're making a mistake. I can play here. And I said, well, I believe you. We'll keep an eye on you, and we're still keeping an eye on you. Congratulations. Well, thanks, Jeff. Uh, it meant a lot to me, that little 40 minutes that we spent, because I was thinking about just packing it in and going home, man. Uh, I was tired of all <laughs> that mess I, I've been going through over the years. So uh, thank, thanks, Jeff. Thank you for joining us, Lance, and happy birthday.
Lance Johnson, our genuine Chevrolet player of the game, as he tripled in three runs in a five-run ninth inning. And our final score is the New York Mets have won four in a row. Today, they beat the Montreal Expos 11-8. On behalf of...